You had I all made, that ground beef. I had ground beef. Yeah. Everything that I made Six yeah. was really burning up this ground <laughs> this ground beef that I had. Mm-hmm. I was very excited about making all these dishes, and I used all six pounds of the ground beef. Good job. That way, I've got like four different entrees in the kitchen uh, that I... Pound and now, a quarter in each one. There, there's a pound, about a pound of ground beef in each one. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, no, I didn't use... I mean, the, I ate some of the, uh, the food that was there, too. Ah. So I have... Let me see. I have dirty rice... Mm. I, I have a double order of hamburger. This, I'm not going to eat this because I'm on a diet now, and I'm not eating the regular, you know, fare. This is for the kids. Uh, this is for the kids. Right. You know, nice, good, hearty, stick to your ribs, kids food. Yeah, this, right. You know, and, and some might say this is not. I know you're supposed to, you know, make healthy food with low sodium for kids, but I mean, once in a while, give them a nice little hearty meal. And I know it's probably full of preservatives, but uh, why am I defending? Me. Why am I defending? <laughs> No, no, this is what I do. This is what you do when you're separated. No you, need to do you, that. You, you somehow feel this urge to defend yourself you're all the time. Fine. I, I made the food, okay, yeah. and it's in the refrigerator now. It's not frozen. Mm-hmm. It's just ready to be put in a nice little kid's bowl and heat it up, and it's going to be fantastic. I'm going right. to serve it with bread, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be wonderful. But I I really do digress. Yes, I was talking about TiVo. Mm-hmm. I was talking about uh, being in my underwear. Yes, standing in front of the kitchen sink as I am uh, cleaning the pots and pans mm-hmm. from my night of cooking because I didn't do the, do it last night, which I might have done, I look outside and I see something highly irregular. I back up to a severe amount of woods. I mean, it is rural, 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 and there is something out there that I am looking at that I do I have never seen before and I can't get a really good angle because it's behind it's obscured somewhat obscured by four or five trees but this is it is big another mm. neighbor in his underwear it is not moving like a bear or a deer because yeah, mm. I've seen plenty of uh, deer out where sure. I live mm. it is moving uh, <laughs> it really is moving it almost looks like a dinosaur wow it is a weird <laughs> it's this weird little thing but it's deep enough in the woods where I can't get a good look at this thing uh-huh. from from my my perch. So I, I go out on the, on the back. I'm gonna get enough of that later. Okay. I go out on my on my patio on the back, and I got this little concrete slab back out there, the house that I'm renting. And I look up the hill, and I'm squinting to try to see, and it, it's not moving like uh, like an animal would move. You know, an animal would have slow moves. It's moving like bird-like movements, and I realize it is. <laughs> it is some type of bird, but it is huge. A pterodactyl. It, no, it's massive. It's it's a very large thing. It Put is not like on. a little tiny bird. Um, forty pounds. That big. Wow. It's big. And I the only thing finally I I, I take a walk into my my. my you know, my sooties are getting cold at this Naturally. point. Because, and, I, and I'm cold, and it's a cold morning that yeah. we have. And I don't want to get all mucked up and, like, walk out into the, the, the muddy part of the backyard. So I, I just, I, I, I clap my hands, and then the thing takes off. And the thing appears to be, and I, I have no idea because I haven't seen one. Uh-huh. I think I may have seen one one time. I think it was a wild turkey. Wow. I think it was, I think it was a wild turkey. But I don't know. It Not was, to drink. No, it looked almost no. That has been spotted. That was the night before. But yes, maybe that accounts so. for what I saw. I wondered. No, you know. it was. Uh, you know, I live out in Virginia, yeah. and I don't know. I, I've heard that they have mm-hmm. wild turkeys yeah. running around Virginia. That's on and this year. thing is gray. It's like gray. It's got feathers. It's but it's big, gray? and mm-hmm. it didn't fly. It kind of sprinted away. Aren't they normal? I think they're normally black, or red, and white. No, this was not. I well, I think of the wild turkey of of uh, when you see a wild turkey. I think of every. Halloween, I mean, uh, Thanksgiving poster where you see the big, almost like peacock feathers with the big fat thing and then the big jowl the hanging waddle. down. This, more, this looked really more like a, like a gray bird mm. that, was, uh, that was just sort of, uh, you know, jamming along a little bit. And I couldn't, uh, I don't know what it was. I, but, it, it, you know, it didn't really scare me, but it did, it, it certainly aroused my curiosity. Ooh. And aroused yeah, me. Yeah, of course. So uh, back in my underwear, I go back in and I don't know, uh, you know, I really don't know whether, whether it was a turkey or not, but I think it was a wild turkey. Uh-huh. I mean, out there and then, to make matters worse, so it just it shakes me a little bit. Sure. But then on my driveway. I, I, did I mention to you the evil like baby doll that was left in my driveway one time? No, that was, no. That looked like it had been dragged there. Oh my god! Yeah, and I actually threw that away, and it was like all chewed on, and it looked like some sort of animal had chewed on it. And uh, like a turkey. Today, I don't know whether this is related to the turkey at all. I mean, yeah. I'm just I'm yeah. a little freaked out today because uh, you know uh, every now and then when you're you're living on your own, you get these sightings that you have. And as I'm driving out the driveway today, uh-huh. there's a half-eaten boot with uh, just like the sole of the boot, a work boot. And it's uh, half-eaten. Something, something. It's not 
that big. Spooky. It is. Somebody has told me that it could be a bear. Uh-huh. It could be a, a wild dog. You live so but far out here's there. here's the BS. We don't have coyotes. Do we, Rob? No. In in Virginia? No. All right. So that was that was somebody who was working. But you are still in Virginia, right? I am in Virginia. You're not out to Ohio yet. Not out, not out to Ohio. But I mean, whatever it is, it's always in roughly the same spot. So not only do I see what I think is this turkey, I hope right. it's a turkey. And I, I don't even know if this is. I mean, is this the season for uh, you know for turkeys? Sure, right? absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm you ever not eaten sure. a wild turkey? Uh, no, no, never had. Harry's had a sister's pleasure. boyfriend killed one once and and brought it and roasted it and it was delicious. And I think it was. I think this is turkey season. Speaking of turkey, is this who I think it is? I'm on. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> Tom, why, why are you calling, Tom? See if I come in and, and throw in for Don. Don's coming in shortly, Tom, so so there really wouldn't be a lot of time. Where's Charlie? Charlie's not here, Tom. Charlie? Can you, Tom, Tom can you spell substitute? Subs, S- substitute. E- E-R- uh-huh. T-E-N-E-R-Y. Spurtenary. Perfect. Uh, no, he's coming in momentarily. He's uh, he doing some candy striping, and he will be here before, he, uh, before I know long. I he's doing candy striping. All right, Tom. Mm-hmm. We got, Tom, we got to run, okay? I know he's doing candy striping. All right. Hello. Don and Mike show. <laughs> hey, Mike. What's up, man? How you doing? Good. Hey, Rob. Hey, hey Buzz. Hey. Hey, Mike. Yeah. I really enjoy the Bill O'Reilly. Mm-hmm. And I was just wondering if maybe at the end of the week you guys could clip the whole week together into, like, a sentence. <laughs> Actually, Don has already announced that we're going to put together a Christmas presentation once the holiday season is upon us. So you can look forward to that, okay? That would be cool. Thanks. That's fantastic. Yeah, Hello, right. Don and Mike Show. Hey, I just want to see uh, if I can talk to Mike. I'm right here, sir. How you doing? Oh, hi, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing great. Great. I think you saw a heron. Wait. No, no, no. Now, wait a minute. I know a heron. I know a blue heron. heron? Yeah, because uh, my family used to, like, really get into them. We, uh, we saw them up in Maine, and they were rare up in oh, Maine. Mm-hmm. So when you'd see one, this was not long. And it was gray in color. It was, it was, yeah, it was gray, but it was a little fatter. Oh. It was a little fatter than that. I think, uh, I think it was a turkey. A turkey. Mm-hmm. Uh, hello, Donna Mike Show. you got to get it and eat it. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, a musket. Well, I mean, yeah, what am I? I'm a pilgrim? Yes. Big hat, mm-hmm. blunderbuss. Yeah. Could I kill it? Who's on my property? Liddy says you can kill anything that's on your property. <laughs> <laughs> kill it and drag it back into your home. Aim for the head. With its heart still beating. Hello, Don and Mike Show. What can we do for you? Hey, Mike. Yes, sir. This is Tommy, the hot dog under the arm guy. Yeah, how you doing, Tom? Hey, Congratulations, Tommy. man. Vegas right, down. Buddy. Hey, uh, Tom, if you were not listening yesterday, Tom won our contest, What Would You Eat? Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I still had that on my mind when I went grocery shopping last night. Sure. Oh, nice. When you went through the meat section, I, all I was thinking of was uh, skin tag. Even though you won, skin tag was on my mind mm-hmm. all night, Tom. Yeah, that was pretty gross. But I just wanted to thank you guys for it. And uh, I want to say that I think I still have the taste of Joe's armpit in my mouth. I can't get rid of it. Mm. Well, is it wow. worth it, though, having the taste of Joe's armpit in your mouth? Is it worth it going to Las Vegas? Darn right, it a thousand is. bucks. Did you get a chance to? Now, you're separated, isn't that right, Tom? Correct. Now, did you get a chance to uh, share the great news with uh, with your uh, separated, estranged wife? And are you going to be taking her to Vegas? Yeah, I got to break Diego's bad news, buddy. He can't go with me. My wife is going with But Diego was like uh, hitting you up for, uh, for going to the. Uh... Yeah, you know. I... Diego like can't I... go. He no. Was, he was going to go with me, but if my wife wasn't going to go. I was going to drag him along. Diego, yeah. get in here. Yeah, no matter how much fun that would be for you, Tom, that's not allowed. That, that's, no. that's not. What, what, was, what did he say to you, Tom? No, I offered it to him. No, oh, I offered you did? it to him. You know, you yeah. couldn't have gone. I don't think you can go legally, even if he had. It wasn't your idea? No, it was my idea. Wait, did you have, what did you have the uh, did you have the steam and undies for Diego, uh, Tom? What's going on? <laughs> no, no, I just had of the heck of it on there. Look, if I win, I'll take you with me. That's oh, that's why. That's very nice. He was probably idea. it was the UFO. All right, all right, you may be excused. I want to tell you something. I took a BM because Diego's music is you. <laughs> you you had a BM, Tommy? Yeah, and and I happen to have seen one of my grasshoppers head sticking. Oh, oh wow! Oh, sure. God, it's fiber. <laughs> so how are you feeling today, Tom? I have a very upset stomach, but like you said earlier, it was well worth it. And uh, while I'm in Vegas, I'm planning on going around January before the Super Bowl. So I will give you guys a call. Now, you're a good man, and you know yeah. nobody was more happy to win than uh, Tom. And uh, you and your estranged wife were very happy for you. I hope you have a great time out in Las Vegas, Tommy. All right, my man. Thank you very much again. Thanks a lot. 
Have a great day. He's a good guy. I he like is. I like I like Tom. I and really you know, like. he really suffered for his art. We talked yesterday <laughs> about how it's really common in those contests to see people shake. Right. Mm-hmm. But he was tearing up and sweating. The one guy, the mm-hmm. first guy actually that was eating the pounds of cat food, which which turned out to be mellow compared to some of the other things right. later on in the show. True. I mean, he had the, uh, the the left hand that was shaking really bad. A lot was... of our listeners are like that anyway. I have a question though. for you. I was going to ask you this yeah. today. I was watching the prices right before I came into work mm-hmm. in my underwear. Yes. <laughs> Which is true mm-hmm. after I, you know, got over this whole bird sighting that right. I had. Mm-hmm. Is Rod Whitey dead? I don't think he's dead. I don't What's know the he's... deal? They got a brand new guy and like they, he's the main man now. Yeah, and I don't like him. He's no. got a real boyish voice. But he's, uh, what is the deal with Rod? Do you know anything about Rod Whitey? I do. Oh, you, you do. All right, what's going Rod on with still recovering from colon surgery, and I think he is supposed to return to the show, you know, health permitting. Okay. But he's yeah. getting up there. I don't know why I laugh at that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sick. I should laugh at we that. We wish him well. Rod Roddy is recovering from colon surgery. Yes. yes Similar to the thing that uh, you and I have suffered from? Uh, they haven't given details, but I get the or impression. Or is it worse? Is it the big, uh, you know? No, no. I don't think it's cancer. The big casino? No, I don't think it's cancer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's similar to what I had, maybe worse. Anything caused by sequins? No. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you look at that guy and you know that he has a bad diet. <laughs> yeah. You so say? he's coming back to the show? Uh, he's supposed to, if his health allows. Yeah. Okay, very Maybe good. in a box. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, Mike. What yeah. I saw was a turkey vulture. They're very prevalent in this area. A vulture? A turkey vulture. Hey, you know what? Maybe. Like the thing in the cartoon with the bald head? Exactly. Mm. They eat lots of BM. <laughs> Do they really? That's all they eat. <laughs> like our listeners. <laughs> Yeah. Like you and everyone calling today. It's the biggest BM eater in town. They, town. they feast on BM. <laughs> it could be. Uh, now I'm bummed, though. I don't want a turkey vulture. I was hoping it was the real turkey. Yeah. I wish it, maybe I'm not giving an adequate description. I have seen a vulture yeah. also. Have I have seen a, this picture a over picture here? of a wild right, turkey up on, on the monitor, monitor here. All right, Mike is going over now to examine the picture of the wild uh, and turkey. And, Mike, you can let us know if this looks anything. That yeah. is the shape? Ah. That is the shape. It is not the color, but it is the shape. Okay, I'll look up turkey mine vulture looks a little, as well. Mine looks a little more gray than that, but that it did have kind of that uh, dinosaur shape. Maybe yours was I'm old. not doing a good job describing it. I know that, but I mean, I think what oh. I... What's that? I said maybe yours was old and it turned gray. I don't know. But, I don't know. But you see how the shape is what's important, because you know what? Maybe the uh, the weather obstructed your... Feet. I don't know. I was in my underwear. Hello, Don and Mike show. Which was also gray. Hello. Mike? Yes, yes, go hey, ahead. I think you probably saw an emu. <laughs> oh. You know? Don't eat BM. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. That's good. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, I, I, I don't think it was a turkey buzzard. I, you ever see Jurassic Park? Yeah, well, that's what I'm talking about. You know, I mean, it had yeah, that kind of... Yeah, they did the dino DNA where they extracted, the, you know, the DNA. You well, know. I'm a believer that the dinosaurs are, you know, what the, some of the dinosaurs are what birds are now. Right, right, right. right, right, right. Well, I, I tried that, and it went terribly wrong. And uh, he got away. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, hold on a second. Lisa Lisa has moved into the area. Uh, do I do I need to keep this guy on hold, Rob? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, yes. Hey, I'm talking to my mom right now. Yeah. She had the same thing with the bird problem, that she thought it was a turkey, had right. a red head. Yeah, and, hey, this didn't have a red head. Oh, uh, well, she called Animal Control, and they came. <laughs> red wig, like <right>, Carrie Pop. <laughs> I don't know. She Tell said, down well, the middle, hey, hey, she, she did what? It, she called Animal Control. It turned out to be a vulture. It was a vulture, and she thought it was a turkey. Well, I'd never call Animal Control on it. I mean, I, I can I can fend for myself. I might buy a shotgun this weekend. Until yeah. <laughs> he starts leaving more toys on your driveway. <laughs> That's another animal altogether. But it, this it, is a, I mean, well, she lives in a small, you know, like a neighborhood. You know how disconcerting it is to have you, like, talking on your cell phone and on the microphone at the same time? I just have my ears. I mean, you just, the great communicator. She just loves to be busy, doesn't she? I am. She's like, you know, all you need is like a palm pilot in your right hand, and you'd be completely connected. I lost my palm pilot, though. What oh, you don't no. realize is who she's talking to on the phone is a wild turkey. <laughs> Hello. Gobble what? Don and Mike <laughs> show. Hello. Thank you, Lisa. Hey guys, how are you? This is Noah. Hi, Noah. How are you? Good, good. First of all, compliment you guys. I love it. Uh, love Don, but I love it sometimes when he's away because it's real nice to hear. Look no, at that makes cousin you, Rob. That makes one of you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, frankly, I just don't possess the work ethic to do this very well. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, they talked about you coming like 10 minutes before the show. Rob, did you show up early or not? Yeah, I gave you like 18 minutes before the show, show today, didn't you? Can I be honest with you? Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I showed up later. No. Did you really? Wow. I came in later today, yeah. Yeah, I left my house about 10 minutes later than I normally do, which when you're as late as I am normally, leaving 10 minutes later is really leaving no room for error. If there had been any kind of accident on the road, I would not have been here. But we had time to have an adequate pre-show meeting. Yes, it lasted about a minute and a half. Exactly. It was fantastic. Yeah. What can we do for you, Noah? Well, just two things, guys. One, I was thinking about what you saw, Mike, mm-hmm. perhaps uh, sipping on a bit too much of Grandpa's cough medicine. No, no, go away. You know, that's amazing. You'd think a guy uh, named Noah would know stuff about I would animals. think so. Yeah. Now, listen, uh, we've 
we've got some business that uh, I've been instructed. What now? What do you turkey vulture. Before over you move here. on, I now All have right, a picture of a turkey vulture. We're going to get to the bottom of this right, dinosaur I, mystery. Now, Mike is looking, and he's looking now at the turkey vulture, which doesn't seem to have the same shape. No. And the color is wrong. Yeah. Uh, is that what you saw, do you suppose, there? Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Now, Joe. give up. What? Don goes away. Everybody's coming in on their own today. What's going on? I have an idea, Buzz. Excuse me. Look Mr. Ardinger. Yeah. Mr. Ardinger. I might when Don is first. not here, when Don is not here, I do run this show. And you speak when you're spoken to. You don't come in and just grab the microphone. Now, what? What do you want? Now, you're, you're making me nervous, Joe. Buzz, pull up a picture of an emu. Okay, I, I will. Please. Again? With the emu. You know, really skilled. No, Anybody possible. coming in? Now, we've had everybody come in on the show now. That's it's true. official, right? Makes me a little nervous when Joe comes in and grabs a microphone. All right, I have to walk over to the corner again to see. Why? Uh, I, it's going to take me a second to get that. So. He's pulling up a picture of me. I think, Buzz, what on. you showed me, which was the real turkey, mm -hmm. I think that's what I saw today. I think so, too. And it was and the same size. It was the same, like, kind of low to the ground. And I think what it is, it was not just a turkey, Mike, but what you saw was an evil turkey. An evil turkey. Uh -huh. It was. And it's probably the evil turkey that brought the baby doll, the, the uh, sick, the scary horror movie baby doll that left it, like, chewed up. It wants your approval. No, I, what, <laughs> what brought the... <laughs> You know it brought you a present. You know, it's not easy to live. Okay, you know, you're married, you're married. It's not easy living alone. It's really not with all these horrible things happening. No mm. evil turkeys in very, my house. Very, very, very scary with seeing things like, you know, and, and, and that baby doll that I saw. Right. Mm. It was a black baby doll that was in there. I'm, I'm sorry. It was a, it was a, it was a baby doll of color. I and, don't know how I. And it had been that. taken uh, obviously out of some mm. area, and it, it was kind of chewed on like a wild dog would chew on it, and it had very scary, <laughs> very scary eyes. I am oh, telling the sure. truth. I'm telling the truth. I have never said this on the air before because I've, but all of my friends know this because I've told this story and one night someone who was coming over to the house late saw the same thing and we, we stopped we were in my car and mm -hmm. I showed this person there and then I I let it stay in the garage for a while I just I, <laughs> I, I picked it up with like my pinky and, you mean and you dragged the doll into your garage I brought it into the garage and then I left now it on that's the side scary. I left it on the well it was scaring me being in the yard and then and then I eventually uh, threw it away <laughs> Did, it was very very scary I think you should have buried it that's oh, how you erase the evil I don't know now, what about the My boot? My is a mess. What? The boot. The boot's going to stay there, too, because I'm afraid to touch the boot now. What size is it? I, have, I, haven't, I didn't get close enough to see the boot. Now, wait a minute. We digress, because I have to solicit for something. Oh. As per Don, Don mm -hmm. has left instructions today that uh, we have a, a, a great Thanksgiving tradition that we are going to have on the show, uh -huh. which is going to be next Wednesday, the, uh, the day before Thanksgiving, which is, uh, everybody, traditionally, the heaviest traffic day, day of the year, year. and uh, which is not to be confused with Friday, which is traditionally the... Heavy Heaviest shopping, shopping day, day of the year. year. Uh, we are going to have a great, a great radio tradition. Thanksgiving on the Mayflower, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah, and uh, in order to do that, because uh, we are often want to go to the, uh, the the last second on some of these things, we desperately need a particular donation for the show. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, we need a Mayflower van. A Mayflower van. Moving van. A moving van. Right. Now, I don't know whether it necessarily has to be a Mayflower van. It can probably be any kind of uh, van, but uh, be our first you know, we, we really need... Is that is that Don on the line? Yes. All right, very good. Caller? Hello, caller. Hello there, Mike Somel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is it... It's him, the black dog, that's in your, oh, your no. driveway. Ooh. Stop it. Oh, I want to no. let you know that Don's and Rob's put me there yeah. to scare you. <laughs> scare you. <laughs> Ooh, scary. You like, you like my eyes? <laughs> yes, no, they scare me. You like my eyes? <laughs> yeah, I know, they scare me, but oh, I, oh, why, did I, why did I ever <laughs> tell the truth? Why did I, I ever... I would also like to say one more day, Mr. Michael. Caller, can you use your regular voice, please? I, I love it when <laughs> Don is not there. <laughs> I love hearing you and Rob and yeah. especially that, that sexy man, Buzz. Yeah, hey, how about Joe Ardinger running in and grabbing a microphone whenever he <laughs> effing wants I, I to? I hate me that Joe Ardinger something fierce. Yeah, well, oh, no. he just came in, just, just trundled in here, didn't even look at me, grabbed the microphone. Holy how are you? Oh. Hey, caller, use your real voice. Is that my real voice? <laughs> oh, no, don't do this to me, please. <laughs> please don't, please. I would, Mike, I would be doing this if I was in there right now. I know you would. Yeah. I know you would. How are you, no. caller? This is, this is the back dog this is the baby doll. This is my baby dolly. 
Mike. My baby Hello. Hello. It's that Mike's baby doll. Baby Dolly, how are you? How are I'm you, Baby Dolly? How how are you doing? How was the candy striping, Baby Dolly? The candy striping was wonderful, marvelous. All right. Well, most importantly, I know you're fond of me being here alone, but uh, do you have any idea? Let me just ask you, Baby Dolly. When uh, when is Don going to be here? He's motoring in now. Oh, what <laughs> wonderful news that is. That is uh, such good news. Yeah, I'm leaving the doctor's office right now. Uh, Let's I, say no. ETA, ETA depends on traffic on the 66s. Ah, the 66s. Well, uh, Baby Dolly, thanks for that update. I'm so glad you're getting that update. <laughs> <laughs> and I sure hope uh, that you're, you're, you're doing well, Baby Dolly. I sure am, Mike. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> So this is your baby doll saying, hey, everybody, yeah. enjoy it now, because that Big Mouth Don is coming back. Oh, Big Mouth Don <laughs> coming in shortly. and Nobody could be happier than me. All right. Thank you, baby dolly. <laughs> Goodbye. Are you talk, scared? Talk to you. I'm scared of you. <laughs> I'm Goodbye, Mike. scared of you. Goodbye, baby dolly. Oh, especially goodbye, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Rob. I love you, too, dolly. Okay. So long, my ebony beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, baby dolly. Goodbye, dolly. There goes baby dolly. Oh, jeez. Now the doll is now in the trash or in your in your garage. The doll it was long gone, Rob. Long okay. gone, like in the dump somewhere. I mean, so I now that it scared me. Uh, it, where, where where was I? I was soliciting for a van because we are going to do. It, well, I think ideally it should be a Mayflower van. Absolutely. Uh -huh. It is. It is Thanksgiving. On the Mayflower, where uh, and and just fill in the details because I just heard this a short time ago. Correct me if I'm wrong. We are going to provide all of our listeners that uh, win this contest. Right. What are you now? I right, found an email. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. Show. I'm sorry, Mike. Right, but I do feel you should walk over and, right. and look at the emu and see if that. Ladies and gentlemen, I will get back to my solicitation for a. Uh, we need the for a black baby dolly. No, <laughs> for a for a Mayflower van. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, first, I have to walk over across the studio. Yeah, he's going over there now to look and see it. See if the emu is perhaps what <laughs> is, he saw. Is that it is what you saw? not an effing emu. Okay, all right. Put that away. Right, and I done. believe we will no have more. no more animals. No please. more. It would be about 6,000 miles away from its habitat it, if you it, spotted that out at Mike's it, homestead. It is oh, not an emu. It is a turkey. I think it is a wild turkey. That is, And I would like some wild turkey right now. <laughs> Just to taste. Like a big old glass of it right now. So you need so, a Mayflower. Yes, thank you, Buzz. Thank you for getting me back on track. What we are going to do on Wednesday's show, traditionally the heaviest travel day of the year, we are going to invite your family down. Down here, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to give it away yet. I think Dom will have information on that. But what we need when we get your family on this thing, we need someone to donate a Mayflower van. We need Just a for real a day. for a day. Mm -hmm. If you can spare a Mayflower van, we will park it in our upstairs parking lot here at the radio station, and uh, we will invite a family to come down here and enjoy a Thanksgiving dinner with all the trimmings from head to toe. On the Mayflower, it should be a lot of fun. So it's very nice. We did it about, I guess, five years ago. We had a full family down, and mm -hmm. we will provide a beautiful turkey dinner with all the trimming, all the good stuff. It'll be. It will not be the turkey that was in my yard today. It will be a regular turkey with the head chopped off that you see, see in the store, preferably frozen, that we will defrost. Right. Well, actually, Marcello's Restaurant is providing it. Oh, really? Ah. Thank you to the good folks at Marcello's see, Restaurant. I get this information as we speak. Hello, yeah. Don and Mike Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Really? Uh, Mike, I wanted to let you know there are coyotes in Virginia. Well, can you give me any more information on that? Because this now this doesn't speak to what I saw today. Mm. Well, I'm not going to freak you out. You were just uh, talking about the doll, and you said there was no uh, coyotes in Virginia. I live a little, a little bit farther out in Petticoat Junction than you do, mm -hmm. uh, out on the other side of the mountain in Winchester. And okay. They have them. Do they have them close in to you know, like uh, you know, near Manassas? I don't know about that. Mike. I say, good are you? Hello, Don and Mike show. Thank you, Marlon Perkins. Hey, Mike. <laughs> there are coyotes in Virginia. Of course. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what? And elephants. Guess what, man? I know what kind of bird it was, man. <laughs> but wait. Can you answer any questions about my baby dolly? <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, it was a chicken hawk, man. A chicken hawk. Naturally. Oh, no. Chicken hawk. Last time I saw it was like on a Warner Brothers hey, cartoon. Chicken hawk. <laughs> I say, boy. <laughs> well, I say, I say it's a chicken hawk. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait, the Foghorn Leghorn was a chicken. Yes, right, he was. But the chicken hawk was, <laughs> was a little one. Henry the chicken hawk. <laughs> yes, Henry. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike Joe. Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm just, I'm all right. I say, let's go scale the disc jockey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, yeah. son. <laughs> Hey, why? I never brought that up before, did I? No. Either off air or on. That's, no. I, that was sitting in my driveway. And it lasted for about a week and a half, two weeks. And uh, is that Wendell walking in or somebody else in camouflage? Hello, uh, what can we do for you, sir? I didn't see yeah, anything. Yeah, I uh, 
if it if it looked like a turkey, but you said it was kind of gray. Yeah, it was kind of gray. It was not like you know the turkey pictures you get where where it's got all the big plume of feathers and it's got the the big like bean bag, right, right. like hanging down. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Right? Do I? Right. <laughs> Do you ever? <laughs> it, it, it was a really weird. I just was not familiar with it. It was close enough to be a concern. Well, you know what? It was probably a hen turkey, a female turkey. Okay. All right, because, I'll buy that. Because they don't have that big plume and everything hanging off them. They're kind of skinny and they're kind of gray. He's right. You know, the female of the species is usually less spectacularly colored. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, you know, that's the first BM eating call that uh, that actually was uh, fantastic. It was useful. If I could, I, I'd take that guy to a titty bar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I get to do it first today. Congratulations. Very, very good. Actually, I was first. Hello. Why? You said And the it? intro. Oh, no. You Hi. did. You shouldn't have told him. I'm sorry. I had a moment of happiness. Yes. It was very fleeting. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, Mike. How you doing? I'm not doing well. <laughs> Rob got to say a certain <laughs> phrase before I did, and I just realized it. I wasn't paying attention, as I am often want to do. Hey, this is Kurt from the Titty Bar from Gatesburg. <laughs> yeah, we now we have to be careful here, no, sir, okay? No. Leave it up to the professionals, right. all right? What can we do for you? Hey, that bird's a guinea hen. Yeah, it doesn't okay. matter where it comes from. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Can't we all get along? Don and Mike show, you're on the air. Uh, it was a pheasant. No, it wasn't a pheasant. It was, hey! I've seen a pheasant before. No, hey! pheasants are crazy. They have braces and they bite, man. They have braces? They have braces, and then the, they put their little retainers in. Oh, go enjoy a plate of BM. <laughs> I didn't expect this to get ugly, but it's getting ugly. Hello, Don and Mike show. You sure it wasn't Margot Kidder out there hiding in your backyard? <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> Possible. Don and Mike show. Does anybody have a Mayflower van that they can donate for us? We need one badly for our uh, Thanksgiving on the Mayflower show. Right. Hello, Don and Mike show. Unfortunately, I don't have that, but I have some good news about a Rod Roddy. Okay. Oh, well, oh good. Is there, is there now, any chance is... that Bob Barker's there and can join me for this? No, no, no stop it. Okay, stop I'm sorry. Got every... what, have I... Is everybody trying to produce the show for I'm me I'm sorry. Today? No respect. All right, what is the deal with Rod Roddy? Quickly, because I'm going to hang up on you. Rod is currently back in the studio and will be seen on air again in mid-December. Thank you. Okay, hello, Don and Mike show. Cranky, don't want to talk about the bird. <laughs> <laughs> it's really getting out of hand. Hello, do you have a Mayflower van for us? No, but I have an idea. Maybe it was an ostrich. Everyone wants to play Stop. the What Was In Mike's Yard game right now. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Do you have a Mayflower hey, van hey for Mike, us? Hey, Mike, man. I'm in sort of a bind right now. What's that? Over at your old house, I can't find your wine opener. Or your... Hello, Don and Mike Show. That's scary. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Maybe he left the booth. Yeah, uh, Mayflower van line. If Mike takes that guy to a titty bar, is that guy going to get... Hello, um, Don and Mike Show. I'm trying. Low pressure. I, I, it's low pressure. It's mm. Friday. Let me let me say again. We are soliciting now for a Mayflower van, mm -hmm. which we need to have for the Wednesday show before Thanksgiving, when we are going to do Thanksgiving on the Mayflower with a full feast for your family, if you're our winning family, provided by Marcello's, Marcello. Marcello's Restaurant, where... Where is that located? I believe it's in Great Falls. In Great Falls, a lovely, lovely place to dine and uh, providing us with a delicious Thanksgiving feast. Hello, Don and Mike Show. <laughs> hey, Mike. I'm one. <laughs> How you doing? Sorry, I'd like to do that again. I changed the subject about your BM great chicken. Okay, hold on. Uh, can you cue that up again? Yeah, you like that? Uh, let me do it. I'll do it like Jack Diamond does it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Marcello's Restaurant has provided us with a lovely Thanksgiving, a lovely turkey, trimming, everything for you and your family. Join us for Thanksgiving on the Mayflower. Here, I did it right that time. Okay. All right, you. I put you on hold. What did you want, sir? Uh, yeah, I was calling about the BM eating dodo bird. All right, everybody hey. wants to talk about the bird. Hello, but, Donna uh, Mike. Who won your little contest there yesterday? I ended up missing. I hope it wasn't uh, hot, that's, or... uh, that's against the rules. You should listen. listen to the whole show. And uh, if you'd listen, you know, in that case, if he had actually listened to this show, mm -hmm. today he would have known who won. Yeah, he's not listening at all. Very good. What can we do for you, sir? Hello, you're on the air. Must be I dead. wanted to uh, tell Mike that, uh, that you have a Mayflower van that you're going to uh, use for our fabulous Thanksgiving on the Mayflower show. No, I did. I know it was in the woods behind his house. <sighs> America okay, we're it. trying to move by this. It's his wife's. All right, yeah. enough. The password is lowest common denominator. <laughs> BM eaters abound, Rob. Yeah, I know. And as we get closer to the ho holiday, I do want to remind everyone that we'll be having a delightful, delightful Thanksgiving on the Mayflower. We invite you to listen to the Don and Mike show, you and yours, for our fabulous Thanksgiving feast. I just love that. Hello, uh, Don and Mike Show. What can we do for you? Hey, Mike. Yes, that, that is that is I. 
<laughs> I'm going to solve your turkey problem. Oh, here we go. Thank God. <laughs> you, uh, you, you saw a turkey hen. Uh, well, I, be- I believe that. We, we've, had, uh, mm-hmm. we've had no less than 15 people call and say that, and uh, I believe that's what it was. But has no one really settled on the fact that it was evil? It was evil. Okay. I think every animal that's around my yard is evil because that's why they're dragging, uh, you know, uh, you know, some some child uh, enjoyed that doll and some workman enjoyed oh, oh. That, that shoe. And then they were unwittingly dragged into my yard by, an, left. E- by an evil beast. <laughs> left for dead. <laughs> Don and Mike show. We have to break in a moment. Hello. We have time for a few more phone calls from uh, the BM public. Hello. Hey, Mike. Yes, sir. Did you see the pop-up timer? I'll hang up and listen for your answer. Okay. That's another thing. Yeah. No one can get by. And it's no. my fault. I brought this up. It was no, the no. truth. It was in my underwear. It happened today. But what I really, you know, I, you know, I would love to get this done for Dom before he gets here. I'd love to, like, accomplish this goal. I'd like to, Dom would walk into the building and I'd say, hey, Dom, we got you a Mayflower van. And right. we did it on my watch. But mm-hmm. it's not going to happen because everybody wants to talk about the goddamn bird. <laughs> Pop-up timer. Duh, how can I tell when my BM is ready? Hello, Don and Mike show. Why, Mike. Up? Yes, you have a Mayflower van for us, right? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't. But you know what? I, we have have a, I have a buzzard that hangs outside. I'm... Okay, uh, we're we're looking for the Mayflower van right now. The Mayflower van for our fabulous show. Hello, Don and Mike show. And we have a secret sound contest coming up momentarily. It's a I'm shame. Trying. You know, it's a shame you didn't find it. See a Mayflower van behind your house today. Occasionally very frustrating when we ask the listening audience to give, Rob. Mm-hmm. Oh, they love to take, though, Mike. And I would like to remind our audience once again that this is not just going to be any day. This is going to be a special day. A day of thanks. A day of food. A day of family. Brought to you from all of us here at the Don and Mike Show. Thank you. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Michael. Yes. Don't I don't like call me that. Don't call him that. I apologize. Thank it's you. OJ Simpson. All right. Thank you very much. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Do you have a Mayflower hey, van? I also, I can't find the baby oil either. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Donna Mike Show. All right. We're going to take. I'm going to take three more phone calls. Hopefully, one of them will be donating a fabulous Mayflower van. I nice. like your chances. Okay. All right. The Here first call. Hello, one. Donna Mike Show. What do you have for us? Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. Hey, Mike, I was wondering if your band play at my wedding. All right. Hello, Don and Mike show. That was the first one. This is caller number two. That bird was a butterball. All right. That's, that's three. Now, I have a, I have, let me see. I have three lines that are just regular ringing and two of them that are on hold. I'm going to take one that is just ringing. That is my hunch. Hello, Don and Mike show. Yeah, hey, tell Mike I don't care what's in his backyard. I just want my damn boot back. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Yeah. I wasn't able to deliver the goods, but uh, we will continue to solicit for that. And if you know somebody who would like to donate that van, uh, we'd be very, very grateful. And uh, right now it is time for the Secret Sound Contest, a contest where I do not know what the secret sound is, but I will play along with Rob, because Rob does know. I do. If you're able to guess it correctly, Rob will tell you. Mm -hmm. I will not be able to because I do not know what it is. You don't know. And Buzz doesn't either. No. You haven't even hazarded a guess. No, I can't. It's a clicking sound. So caller 100 right now, and uh, what else is the phone number? 1877 365 What is it again? 1877 All right. 1877 And uh, if anyone does have a Mayflower van, call it that same number. Yeah, yeah. Caller 100 right now because we're taking calls for the secret sound, and we will be right this after that. This is the Don and Mike Show. What could I do when I was Celestia? I spoke a different language. I spoke a different language that God and I spoke yes. together. I could see into the future. I could heal people. Can you still remember that language you spoke? Of course. Can you do any of it? Sure. What would you like me to say? I don't know anything. Well, the word for God, okay, a lot of it is prayer. The word for God in my language was called kinesh. Oh, what a wing nut. Ah, kinesh. I could that to my dome. It is a good fortune, Issa Don, to be here. The Don and Mike Show. <laughs> Even better than a nice hot bowl of nasal bisque. The Don and Mike Show. I think uh, Anne Hayes was in my backyard this morning. Could have been. I scared her away. <laughs> 
She flew away. Welcome back to the Don and Mike Show. Mike is here. Don is on his way. Mm -hmm. He will be here momentarily. I do want to uh, mention to you that uh, postponed from yesterday because we had so much fun with all the skin tag eating and all, uh, Dr. Patty, the sexpert, will be here to uh, talk about liberator shapes. That's the name of these sex pillows. Mm. And uh, she got sex pillows that apparently are supposed to uh, enhance your sex life. And the girls from AmazingEntertainment.com will come in to uh, demonstrate. I do believe that is going to be next week on the show. And, uh, of course, uh, Dinner on the Mayflower. Very excited about that. Without further ado, let's get right to caller number 100. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, I'm caller 100. You are indeed. Who's this? Daphne. What is it, Anthony? Daphne. Daphne. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Is it Philip? <laughs> is it Roger? Hello, Daphne. Where are you calling from? Delaware. Delaware. Whereabouts in Delaware, Daphne? I'm from up near Clayton. That's wonderful. Well, uh, you are caller number 100. Are you uh, excited about playing the secret sound game? Oh, yes. It's it's such an easy game this time. What is that noise? Yeah, it's very difficult. I, I share your pain there, Daphne. We're going to give you a chance to uh, to guess the secret sound, and uh, you'll have 15 seconds to uh, to wait and then tell us what your guess is. And uh, you're not allowed to uh, to guess until I sing like digital underground. Are you going to remind her of yesterday's clue? Uh, yeah, what was yesterday's clue, Rob? Which is that every grown-up adult, man or woman, has heard this sound and hears this sound quite often. <sighs> Very helpful. So, so glad are. we were able to uh, share that with her. Uh, mm. Are you ready, Daphne? Sure, go ahead. Okay, good luck. Caller, Thanks. name this sound. Very helpful clue. It's like it's, it exists somewhere in the world. <laughs> there it is. Very exciting. There's digital underground. <laughs> I'm spunky. I like my oatmeal lumpy. I'm sick with this. Straight ganks to Mac. But sometimes I get ridiculous. I'll eat up all your crackers and your licorice. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. A little longer than normal. Sorry, Daphne. You're humpy hump. All right, Daphne, without further ado, uh, what is the secret sound? Lighting a gas stove. I'm sorry. Lighting a gas stove is incorrect. That is incorrect. I don't know what it is, Daphne. You and I are both uh, in the dark. We don't know what it is. But I do have a lovely parting gift for you, okay? All right. You won a Sopranos prize pack. Chat online with Soprano star Jamie Lynn Sigler. That's Meadow Soprano on Sunday, December 1st at 10 p.m. Just log on to hbo.com backslash Sopranos and submit your questions. Okay, Daphne? All right, cool. Thanks. Okay, hold on the line for a second. That was Daphne. Thank you. And I am very excited about this. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, my name is Rob Karnak. And I'm calling this, to say, uh, that is so okay. I've got a uh, a, a paper mache pinata, <laughs> edge liver, uh -huh. and no. Okay, uh, that, do you get that a lot? I'm sure. Uh, well, from time to time, but uh, only from older people. Anymore. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, I I uh, I have a little intelligence on you that you uh, you may have some good news for us, Karnak. This is true. Is yeah, is Karnak? Pull up to my head, and uh, we just might be able to provide the uh, moving gun for you guys. Oh, that's Ooh. magnificent. You know, it's wonderful, Karnak. But uh, I, I did hear a word in there that uh, caused me a bit of concern. You you said might. Well, we're looking forward to be able, being able to do that, but uh, we just wanted to go ahead and. Uh, Get some information and uh, find out. Uh... Well, what information do you need? I'm sure I can provide that for you right now. Mm -hmm. We can take care of this business uh, post-haste. Okay, terrific. Uh, go ahead, Karnak. Uh, what information do you need from me? Okay. Uh, obviously, Thanksgiving is Thursday. but uh, Yes, it's a lovely day when family and friends get together to feast on the bird at the yeah. center of the table and enjoy camaraderie and companionship as they... Whatever. Uh, what, are, what are your other uh, questions, Carnegie? Uh, well, will you need the uh, the van on Thursday, or will no? You we will need the, the we will need we will need the van to be here for showtime at three o'clock, probably a little early. I would sure. assume, maybe around mm -hmm. noon. Got to set okay. the table. About noon on Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. That is when we are having our Thanksgiving on the Mayflower, okay. because we will not be here on uh, Thanksgiving Day. All right. So, uh, what, what is it? Still might, or is it definitive? Well, I'll have to uh, just go back to my boss, but uh, dropping it off on Wednesday should not be a problem. Ah. Ooh, oh, I just I hung up on him by accident. No, and that was that was a mistake. Hi oh. <laughs> I hung up on Garnett. He's gonna think he said might, and it really pissed you off. And no, I, I, well, down. you know, I like to have it kind of locked up. You were concerned. You know? Lisa, sure. call the guy back. Say, you see, you know, and uh, we'll get him on the air Trace when uh, when he can, uh, you know, be definitive on that. But it sounds like maybe we'll uh, we will have our wonderful Thanksgiving on the Mayflower. Yeah. We'll keep working on that. Um, I think maybe we'll still take calls if somebody's got a Mayflower. That guy did not sound one hundred percent. Sure. So uh, I'd like to speak to Karnak's boss. <laughs> Karnak? Freddie de Cordova. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Wendell Smoot Hall uh, did hand me this during the break. Uh, it says coyotes were recognized as a potentially serious threat to Virginia's livestock industries in the early 1980s, and all this blah, blah, blah. The Virginia Sheep Industry Board really contributes financial. Yeah, the, yeah, and then well, you heard while coyotes happened. are not protected, live coyotes may not be imported or possessed in Virginia. Oh. So, you know, that'll, that'll ruin some kids' Christmases. Yeah. And uh, coyotes may be taken without limit. Sounds like hunting to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hung up on that guy by accident, Lisa. Oh, well, it would be, well, you talked to him. He's saying might. He's not saying definite. So when he says definite, we can we can talk. Well, you heard uh, about the uh, coyote situation last week, didn't you? What was that? They broke into Toys R Us and stole a lot of black baby dolls. Oh, so thank you, Rob. <laughs> uh, electronic calls permitted on private lands. Will they written whatever? There this is way. Wendell NRA. Thank you, Wendell. Uh, where are we? All right, Don is on his way in here, and uh, unfortunately today. Uh, a wonderful feature, one of my favorite features on the show, uh, is going to be postponed till next week. It is the newsmaker of the week. But okay. I thought it would be a wonderful opportunity for uh, for me to uh, to pull back the curtain on the show, give our listeners a a wonderful peek behind the scenes as to the very talented actor that uh, portrays well every newsmaker of the week. A profile, and, uh, if you a, will. a guy that is, uh, well, he's a very talented actor. Yes. And uh, Don and Rob have recognized his acting skills for uh, for quite some time. And uh, let's get him, uh, let's ring him up, shall we, Rob? Sure, let's give him a holler. Talking, of course, about Timmy Obibane. That's correct. And uh, he's enjoying a rare week, week off from uh, the newsmaker of the week. He's recharging. He's a wonderful guy and a very, very good friend. Well, not obviously at his desk right now, but he, oh, he might be. He's busy, you know, very busy. He is a very busy. What exactly is uh, Timmy's job here at the radio station, Rob? You know what? I believe his title is listed on this sheet of paper. Director of Fun and Games? No, he uh, is the assistant business I, manager. You've reached Timmy. Please leave a message and your call will be returned. That's not Timmy. I know, it's Andy Rice. I hate that. Oh, I don't want to hear Andy Rice. <laughs> well, leave a message. No, I don't. I want to, I want to find him. Right. Would you like to page him? Yes, let's, uh, let's page him. <laughs> Oh, one moment. Hold on, we're going to put the pager into uh, effect here. Let's yeah. go ahead and put it into motion. Huh? Almost. Okay. These, you know, big sources like your message. No, what? no. What's happening? Well, I don't know. Yeah, we need to page. To re-record. No. How's this phone working? Pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> That's all right. There we go. Beats a turkey in your backyard. Go ahead. You're on the air. Paging Timmy Obibane. Paging Timmy Obibane. Call the air studio, please, for your special interview. Paging Timmy Obibane. Thank you. There's a, there's a turkey in my heart. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, Timmy is uh, is just a, a good friend of mine. Timmy and I uh, kind of, you know, roar around town together once in a while. And uh, I thought it would be very nice for everybody to get to know Timmy, his likes, his dislikes, and what it takes, the, the talent that it takes to be the newsmaker of the week. What goes into it? You spent yeah. a lot of evenings out with Timmy, haven't you? Not a lot. I've done it twice. They've been late. Yes, they've been very late. But Lengthy most, uh, evening. Most, mostly they are they are late. Like the uh, Playboy. Uh, I do also want to mention that uh, coming up on the show, along with dinner on the Mayflower and Dr. Patty, uh, before we uh, you know before long, we are going to be giving a a wonderful trip to New York City. That's a very special trip. We don't have the details right now for you, but I'll tell you, they're shaping this thing up, and it's going to be a great prize. We'll also be giving away a Sony PlayStation 2 and a digital camcorder, and uh, of course, our American Idiot winner. Live in concert. That is uh, that is another story unto itself yeah. with, uh, with, our, with our wonderful... Guess who we have standing by. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome the star of one of the greatest features in radio history, the newsmaker of the week. Here he is, the man behind all the voices, <laughs> Timmy O'Bibane. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Tim. What's up, bro? What's up, Buzz? Hey. Hi, Timmy. Timmy. You know, Tim, I, I don't have anything to do with the newsmaker of the week. I, I enjoy it like a fan. And uh, I know that Rob and Thank Don you. put it together a every week, and they, they work with you. And uh, I, I just know that it's important for everybody to know what a talent you are and that each and every week you come into Buzz's studio, and uh, and, and you do just a, such an incredible job. How do you do it, Timmy? Oh, man. I, well, I, I emulate you, Mike. <laughs> that's yeah. how I do it. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. no, thank you. Oh, that's not necessary. Please, the applause is not necessary. Tim, you know, you know you're, you've kind of uh, wallowed in obscurity here at the station for a number of years. You've been on the show occasionally. I know you've been I on the... A, I try to keep a low profile. But man. now with this newfound fame, I mean, <laughs> is it difficult for you walking around town? Are you recognized as the newsmaker of the week? I mean, you've been... Anybody from uh, you know from Cal Ripken Jr., the long president time. of the United States, right, I mean right, everybody. You know. It's a, every week, Timmy. It must be incredible. <laughs> 
Well, you know, with my, uh, my with my accentless voice, mm -hmm. you know, it's very hard to, to recognize my voice uh, anywhere in the city. Mm -hmm. You know that. Uh, however, some people manage to say, "Hey, I've heard that voice before." Well, let's find out a little bit about uh, the man, the man behind the uh, the star. And uh, and Timmy, you are you are single. That is correct. I know that because I'm going out <laughs> with you. And uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, just uh, how how old are you, Timmy? Oh, <laughs> I am just a few days. Older than five. <laughs> well, are you hung up about revealing your age? Tim? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Really? Like yeah. a girl? It's like it might be a secret. <laughs> wow, Timmy, have you ever like in, uh, in one of my uh, drunken stupors? Have you ever shared your age with yes, me? Yes, 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 I have. And you know? I, uh, you know, I have completely forgotten. But I mean, Timmy, if you're freaked out about that, we won't. Uh... Now, are you currently involved with anyone, Tim? No, I'm not. I have, I have friends, though. So. You have friends? Yeah. Yes. See, because really, around, the, regulars. around the station here, Timmy is uh, is really considered quite the, the stud. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. you've seen him operate. I've on. seen a he. He walks into any any restaurant in Washington. And, and no, just, that's, women that's, flock to him. That's just a myth. It's, no, Timmy, I know you. I know you are popular with the ladies. I'm very uh, curious about the age thing. That uh, so, Boy, I wish I'd remembered it now when you told me. That's well, incredible. I told you. You know it. You're 29, right? <laughs> Timmy, if we were to guess your age, would you tell us who was closest? No. Wow. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, let me ask Timmy seriously, why wow. why hung up on the age? Well, you know, I, I'll tell you all the air. Do you think it'll destroy your rap with the chicks? No, is that what no, it is? No. Tim, he must right, be... Timmy is 67 years old. Older than he looks. That is exactly what he is right now. Black and Timmy, uh, you know, because, you know, I, I never have noticed an accent. You know, I, I, I want to maintain, you know. Because I'm so young, I want to maintain credibility with people I do business with, so mm. they think I'm older and respect me. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, I see. Because it really, because he's in his teens. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what. And Timmy, uh, for those of you, I've certainly never noticed an accent myself. But uh, for anybody in the radio land that might hear an accent, where, where do you hail from, Timmy? Where? What is your country of origin? Originally from Nigeria. That's why we call him the Nigerian Nightmare. Mm. Precisely. That was his softball name. And uh, and oh, how, yeah. how long have you been here, Timmy? From the softball days. Yes, the softball. <laughs> Days. How long have you been here, Timmy? Uh, I've been here over, I'll say over 10 years. 10 years. Uh -huh. And uh, you, you love it here in the United States? Yeah, I any, do. Any plans to uh, go back home at all and uh, live, or is this home now for you? Well, I mean, I am a U.S. citizen, yeah. however. Oh, yeah. uh, Rob, get the applause. Rob, Rob. Rob. Oh, what did you say? I'm a citizen of the world. <laughs> He's a citizen of the world. Hmm. Chicks love that. Too. They do. <laughs> they absolutely love that. I am a citizen of the world. Yeah. Timmy, uh, you know, that is that is such wonderful news that you are a citizen of the world. And, Let me uh, ask you this, Mike. Yes, when are you yes. going to come out again into the city? Hey, you know, Timmy, anytime you ask me, there is nobody that I enjoy hanging out with more than Timmy O'Bibin. Mm -hmm. And I think you do a fantastic job on the Newsmaker of the Week. You're well, a, thank you. Coming you, from you, man, I really appreciate that. You're a true, true talent, <laughs> Timmy. You know the, what I love about Timmy is so many actors rely on makeup. And prosthetic. <laughs> and Timmy does it all with acting. And Timmy, I applaud you for that. <laughs> Rob the man. <laughs> Rob is the man. And Timmy, uh, would you be interested in taking any calls from our listening audience, from, from women or, or anyone else for that matter? Well, sure, all sure. Right, all right, if you would like to talk to Timmy of Bibonet, let's see if we can get some calls for Timmy. Hello, Don and Mike Show. You are on with uh, superstar Timmy of I'm on? Yes, you are. Who's this? Uh, John. John, where are you calling from, John? More? What can we do for you? I just want to hear Buzz say, I love Cox Cable, and emphasize the Cox. <laughs> Timmy, I'm sorry that wasn't a call for you. I enjoyed uh, that. Buzz, would you... Uh, That's a good question, though. Would you, would you like no, to go I, along you know, with I, that? I do it on the commercial. No, I, I think I'll, I'll pass, pass on that one. Yeah. Good judgment. <laughs> <laughs> The audience loves that during yeah, our... They do. They like you. when he makes a fist. Timmy O'Bibane <laughs> segment. Hello, Don and Mike show. You're on with Timmy O'Bibane. Uh, yeah, you still looking for a Mayflower trunk? Yeah, we are. As a matter of fact, the guy that called in before was uh, was not really definitive. We're trying to uh, uh, get a couple of people. And uh, has he called back, Rob? Have we contacted our him? Our producer just told me in our headphones that we've got our Mayflower we've truck. We've got our that. Mayflower truck. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back... Welcome back to the studio. Mm -hmm. A man who is now relieving me. I can go back to putting my feet up and enjoying my life as it is, my role that I enjoy. Mr. Don Geronimo is here. Timmy, this is the man who hired you to be one of the great actors yeah, of our time. Hello, Captain. Hey, kind of a reunited yeah. thing here. Hey, Tim, now listen, we're going to have something uh, special uh, next Wednesday. Day before Thanksgiving, we're going to have a special newsmaker of the week. Oh, wow. On 
Wednesday since we didn't get to that uh, to that favorite today. Well, Timmy, right. I, I know that I'm a big fan, and I know you got a lot of fans out there. Thank you so much for coming and sitting over in the guest seat for, for I'm a, a short big period fan of time. too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do you have any questions for Timmy, Don? <laughs> I see him every day. I don't have any questions for him. Bye, bye Timmy. All right, Mike. All right, take care. He's on your side. There we go. Welcome back. Uh, how was the oh, candy you know striping? You're going to have to press the button over there, Mike. Okay, there we go. All right, he's gone. There. Like the go. wind. Nicely mm-hmm. done. Like the wind. Nicely done. If you wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind now. What would you like? I'll do. I'll do. Just flip that monitor back around yeah. the other way. Absolutely. Let me do that. Thank right you now. so much. Put the. Just give me a second to put the little clock hey, there. Is that a new keyboard? Put up. Uh, yes. Was what a new keyboard? Right over on my side. I just. Hey, you got a new pretty keyboard. All right. All right. Cool. Give me just a second to uh, to put up my picture of Jennifer Aniston. Mm-hmm. Get all your stuff Thank together. Show. Thank you for helping me out. Sorry I'm late. Blah, blah, my blah. pleasure. Blah, 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 blah. You can't help it when you give so, so much it hurts. So, hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. And still, in your, you know, even though you're not here, wonderful sketch with the black baby doll. In. <laughs> Hello there, Mike. Hey, you know. I would have done that even if I was here. I can't believe I've never said that to you or Rob or anybody here. I've known this all along. <laughs> I lays in your driveway and I says, when am I Lexus coming home? Oh, look. Oh, there's Mike. Hello, Mike. It's me. You scare me. The black doll in your driveway. I don't know how you got there, but some sort of animal. Boo! <laughs> Scared kids. Woo! So anyway, hi, and uh, thanks for uh, thanks for holding it together. No problem. Much uh, much appreciated. We can just now, Robbie. We just move that keyboard. Hey, and you know what I'm there. happy about? I'm happy because I know you gave a directive before you left about the uh, the Mayflower van, and we got it. So we yeah. do have well, that sad. for uh, for Wednesday. The guy was saying Mike before, but Lisa says that uh, that is a lock. We will have Just Thanksgiving like dinner on the Mayflower next Wednesday. And that's going to be a, a gigantic uh, presentation for a family with uh, your host, Joe Ardinger. Very good. Uh, Joe will be wearing the pilgrim suit this time. Right. It's been, uh, I went back through and, and checked. It's been exactly eight years since we last did this. And this is absolutely the oldest jivest radio promotion in the world. You know, have Thanksgiving dinner on the Mayflower. And it doesn't work unless you get really a Mayflower van. Yeah, you got to have a Mayflower van. So yeah. next Wednesday we'll have the van Very good. downstairs, and we've got a caterer. And uh, on Monday we'll, we'll pick uh, the family. Good. We'll pick the most deserving family. We'll put our, our heads together to figure out exactly uh, what the criteria will be yes. for the family. And, uh, of course, there will be some uh, tasteful nudity involved. Yes, yes. and Marcello's restaurant has provided the... Uh, the great feast, delicious turkey. Uh, it's uh, it, Marcello's a wonderful property. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so for, at midnight, the uh, the uh, ball drop, uh, balloons, and uh, noisemakers, and uh, cham- cranberries, champagne toast, delicious cranberries, four hundred bucks. So high, and uh, you know, this is actually. For me, this could be a workable schedule. You, you'd, you'd actually like to come in and... Uh, I wouldn't mind if you just do the first hour every day and just make my day just a three-hour broadcast day. Well, you know, my life is pretty mundane, though. I mean, if I hadn't had a turkey in my backyard, I wouldn't have anything to talk about. <laughs> oh, but, you, but you've been sitting on the black doll thing for how long? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and that came out of nowhere. I just started talking, and, uh, you know, my lips move, and all of a sudden the, the story about to all of a sudden... There's a lot of crap that gets dragged into my uh, yard, and I'm not sure where it comes from. Give me right one thing. moment. I'm just arranging pencils mm-hmm. and, and cards. You are a man who likes and order. I've got my stuff, and I am absolutely ready. Good. Here we go. Well, now, now, what is this? Can someone tell me what this is? Um, yes, you will like that. That was a prank call made to B.O. today. Ah, a Bill O'Reilly prank call. We uh, uh-huh. held that for you. We were waiting for you to get here because this is something I, I don't know. You haven't heard this yet, oh, right? Obviously, I just walked in. Yeah. You're going to like this. Okay. So somebody calling O'Reilly about us? Right. Let's so, all right, let's, let's roll that, please. Let's go to D.C. and Garrison's on the line. What say you, Garrison? Hey, O'Reilly. How are you doing? Good. Um, I would have to give a uh, person of the year to a man that's led, to a man that's stuck up for what he believed in. Uh, to a man that backs down from no challenge. That would have to be Don Geronimo of the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> Don Geronimo of the Don and Mike Show. Now, are you related to this guy? What's that? Are you related to him? Do you no, know him? Did guy. he give you a car? No. That because be Garrison, nice. on, the, on the screen here, it has Jesse Ventura. Yeah, I changed my mind. Oh, you did uh, not. You wanted to give this guy a plug, Garrison. <laughs> we know where you live. We're going to come over to your house tonight and uh, take a reprisal. Hey, it wouldn't be a gentle reprisal. We'll probably force you to wash our car. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly, you know, he's... Yeah. Hey, wow. 
nice to know that he uses our our technique though for dealing with yeah. a crank. We're coming to your house, and we always say we're going to eat your dog. The gentle giant Bill right. O'Reilly, mm-hmm. That's funny. man of uh, man of great humor. Of course, he has no idea right. that every day we're using the uh, the Bill O'Reilly moments. And we we're not sure how he would take it if he did know. Now that's why we're trying to keep it from him. So everybody should uh, you know keep that on the down low. Yeah, absolutely. As opposed to the J Lo, keep it on the uh, on the down low. <laughs> so uh, I, I won't bore you with uh, why I'm late today. Uh, suffice it to say, it all goes back to that fateful day. Uh-huh. Yeah, the Buick. September 30th. Mm-hmm. The Buick, the CVS, the parking lot, <laughs> the back that refuses to heal. Mm-hmm. Everything okay today? or uh, Well. You doing better? Um, Any good news? <laughs> I'm not paralyzed. That's good. All that right. is the good news. That, that can happen sometimes. Yes, it can. And uh, they're performing the test on me where I was, you know, I've got a thing. About feet. I I mentioned this very briefly yesterday. I don't like my feet to be touched. I don't like my feet to be looked at. Uh, My feet uh, used to actually be really gross. Uh, And now my feet are looking much better. Right. Uh, right. The diseased toenails are, you know, that fungus thing. It's only on, on... Two, it used to be on like seven of them. You're taking your medicine. Yeah, now now it's only on two of them, and I make a point of always clipping my toenails, and Mm -hmm. and they look real nice, but I still got this thing about feet. So one of the things that they had told me uh, when I was hit by the car, Mm -hmm. and I I say that for Mike's metaphor, because Mike loves it when I (laughs) I say I was hit by a car. I'm sorry I shouldn't (laughs) chuckle when you say that. I'm glad it brings you joy. (laughs) It it brings me a little bit of joy. Well, I know you survived the accident. (laughs) One of the things they told me is always, watch out for it. I had a pain in my hip, a dislocated hip. The pain went up my shoulder, said no problem. Pain goes down yeah. your leg. That's serious stuff. Let us know. And mm. and a couple of days ago, uh, as I described it to the doctor, and I got to be better with the descriptions because I said my foot felt like ginger ale, mm. my right foot. And and he didn't get that. He looked at me and he said, "I don't understand." Mm. I said, "You know, it, it felt like it was going to sleep. My tingly. Felt, felt tingly like it tingly. Was, he should know that as a medical man. Like yeah. it was falling to sleep. He laughed and he said, that, I, "I've got to write that one down." My yeah. foot felt like ginger ale. First year resident should know ginger yeah. ale. Uh, so uh, what they wanted to do then was find out if, if in fact, and boy, you would love this. If I was like wheelchair bound, if uh, <laughs> well, you, come on, you loved it when I was hit no, by a I'm car. I'm concerned. I really, I get legitimately concerned. What that that, that you may like be heading towards no the, paralysis. No, there's, there was the chance. Well, I know the procedure you had today. Because I've, I have had nerve damage done mm. now. And the no. procedure you had today is a procedure where. That can happen. I mean, you know, it's like anything. Like, you can die in the operating room. Yeah. They have to warn you, though, that you might suffer paralysis. No, and I didn't even have that procedure today. today oh, you didn't I, have that. Today I went to see a, a, a specialist. Uh, right. Other than the other guy, and, and the guy that I went to today, you know, here's how I know he's a good doctor. He knew the ginger ale thing right oh, away. There you right. Go. I said, my foot feels like ginger ale, and he said, ah, it's, I know what you mean. It's like your foot's kind of falling asleep all the time. Said, right. Yeah, absolutely right. Mm-hmm. And... uh he did the same thing. I said, please don't do this. They just did it yesterday. He said, I need you to lay on this metal table. Oh. That, you know, it's got the little... And why is it when you lay on those tables, they, they, it's got the world's cheapest toilet paper? <laughs> on you the, mean like on, that, that flat paper that, that, that is just... That slides easily on the and, medical table right. because invariably, as soon as I get up there and move one inch, <laughs> it rips and it tears. You and couldn't it, wipe with it though. I don't think it's got kind of a waxy surface to it. I, it well, in a, in a pinch you could. No, in a pinch you could <laughs> use you know your own hand. Just about anything. So I climb up on the table and of course the 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 paper breaks and they come in and they got to put more paper on and it breaks again and finally they tell me to get on the table and then they just put like a, a bed sheet on. Much better. So now I'm laying in and he's. And and he says, now, um, we're going to remove your shoes and socks. And I'm feeling all oogie about this. And, right. and of, of course, for this procedure, they have to call in a, a girl who really could have been in the, in the Victoria's Secret show the other night. Wow. Just a beautiful, striking, strikingly beautiful. You know, all the medical attention you've been getting since this happened, it seems to be surrounded. And, and I know you're not lying about that no. either. I mean, they, 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 I want to get... Like something wrong with me. No, my regular therapist, Elena, and and when I'm done with all this, I'm going to get her on the air and thank her. Uh, she is just as as hot as can be. Wow! <laughs> and uh, I went to see her first today before I had to go see this other guy, which is why I was like, she's just looking 
really, really incredibly hot today. Kind of Friday hot. And I've kind of gotten over the fact now that she pulls down my pants in the back and sees sure. the crack of my ass. So you don't get fully aroused anymore? No, no. I'm just, I'm just kind of, you know, it's like a crane that goes about right. halfway up now. Exactly. And, uh, you know, she actually, uh, on Monday, I'll, I'll bring it in. I was uh, telling her that one of the frustrations that I've had with this back problem is the fact that I, I can't hit that thing. Mm. That, uh, yeah. you know, I'm going crazy. That I, I want is that how you put it to her, too? No, I, I, I said to her, I said, it, well, she was saying, Are, you're frustrated because we've not made a lot of progress, and now we've got a setback with this nerve thing. Mm. You know, what other problems are you having? Are you having a problem sleeping? I said, no, not really. Are you having a problem? BMs? Uh, no, no problem in that regard. Good. That's right. Uh, good. And I said, yeah, you know, if I can be honest with you, and I think I know, I think I know her well enough now. Sure. For God's sakes, I've been going there for six, seven, almost eight weeks. Right. Um, I really would love to have relations with my wife, mm -hmm. but I, other than my wife servicing me, which doesn't seem to be anything that she really wants to do. Uh, I don't know what to do, and uh, she called me up uh, when I left when I left the place. The, uh, she said, "Try this." The therapist. Oh. She said that uh, <laughs> she was going to give me on Monday some. Uh, she had a book at home, and she was going to bring me. Uh, she was going to uh, uh, copy a uh, fax of some pages off with some positions. Oh uh, man! Uh, like where, where she said, you, if you put uh, strategically, you put a pillow, uh, a smaller pillow, sex right pillow. underneath. Well, you maybe we should have that. Mm -hmm. That sex spread on sooner than later. Maybe one of her no, pillows would help. No, you. no, 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 no. I don't want any of that. Uh, any of that junk. Someone who's on the show to hawk something. I just. Well, I mean, it, it might be a pillow that you would be able to use, though. No, she was telling me use just everyday pillows. Uh -huh. She's talking about sex positions yeah. with you. She said. Oh, way to go. What you want to do is you just get one like underneath your hip, and then get two or three to elevate your knees, yeah. and then very carefully. If you're very careful, you could do it with with woman on top. And she said that. Yeah. Were you getting hot when she was talking to you about it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Been a while. That is great. And uh, then uh, she called uh, after I left uh, the place to go see the other doctor. She called to schedule a, another. I mean, you know, I don't know how many more MRIs I'm going to have to have, mm. but I have to have another one. And she was calling to schedule it, and she said, "Oh, incidentally, I found the book." that I was telling you about, would you like me to fax you the pages? And I said, no, I'll wait till Monday, because the last thing I wanted was not to be here. Why don't you tell her you want to go over the pages now, with her? Because I figure I'm not here at 3 o'clock mm -hmm. today. The fax machine all of a sudden, because the only fax machine we have is the one that's back there in the producer's room, all of a sudden, the cover page comes over from uh, a doctor's office, and it's and it's a page after page of sexual positions. Mm, wow! I knew right away someone runs in, and you've got a whole first break. Yeah. All by yourself, and uh, man, oh man, a shove it. I want to share that with everybody. So I get done well, with I, just, her. I can't get by the fact that you're talking about sexual positions with the with this hot therapist. Well, uh, I mean, that's just got to be cool. She's uh, she's very nice. Mm -hmm. I've, 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 she's obviously very... Is she clinical about it? <laughs> of course she is. Uh, no, she said... Uh, actually, I think the quote was, uh, boy, your your hard C must be ready for some nice <laughs> wet pee. Wow. And then she said, but if you're really in a pinch, go to a titty bar. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, she's clinical. She's, yeah. uh, she, wow. you know, she's married, and she was telling me, oh, you know... She's married? Yeah, oh. and... and uh, she said, of course, you want to have relations, and I've got this, this book, and, and so I'll bring it in Monday. All right. All right so I, go, I leave that office, and I go to the other office to see the guy because my foot feels like ginger ale, <laughs> and they do that thing again. I'm, now I'm laying on a table, and now another beautiful nurse, different doctor. I'm laying on the table. She comes in. Well, the doctor didn't tell me before I laid down on the table they were going to do the foot thing. Mm. So she takes off each of my shoes, unties the shoes, uh, and the shoes might be kind of gamey. I, I really don't know. I try to buy a new pair every couple of months, but I don't know. <laughs> every couple of weeks. And I got, uh, I got, of course, fresh socks on. Good. And uh, she, she starts to take the socks off. And I said, oh, wow, do you really have to do that? She said, it's my job. Just let me do it. Takes the socks off and just stands there for a second, <laughs> awkwardly <laughs> looking at my feet. Hmm. Now... There's really nothing. I know I've kidded before about my feet. There's really 
nothing wrong with them right. at, at this point. The, it's the nails that have a problem. Now, the, the toenail fungus, as a matter of fact, is on two of the small toes. Okay. On the one, two, three, the fourth toe. So it's working its way out of your system. Yes. Yeah, so it's on, it's on the fourth toe to the right, on the right foot, and it's on the absolute pinky toe on, on, the, on the left toe. So it, it's hard to, to even notice it. And... She, because she and I were in this awkward moment waiting for the doctor, were standing there, and she was just standing at the at the front of the table <laughs> and just looking at my feet. I hate that. You know, and, and it was driving me crazy. And uh, I finally said to her, now keep in mind, I'm laying back. Finally said to her, make love to me. I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm laying back on the table, and I, and I crane my head up, and I go, I'm kind of foot phobic. Would you stop staring at my feet? <laughs> and she says, I'm, I'm, I'm really not. Staring at your feet. Mm -hmm. I'm staring at something else. <laughs> well, <laughs> she said, she said I'll, I'll wait for the doctor to come. Was she equally hot, though? Yeah, she was hot. And, mm -hmm. I, and here's how I know I pissed her off. But when I said, please don't stare at my feet, mm -hmm. she said, I'll leave the room until the doctor's ready. And as she walked out, she said, would you like the light on or the light off? Wow. Now I'm alone in this room, and before I could even answer, she turned the light off and shut the door. Wow. So I'm just laying in this examining room on this cold table. And then she went down the hallway sobbing. <laughs> and then uh, five minutes later, she and the doctor come back, and right away he opens up this little, this little like, purse he's got. Right. With needles, mm. and it's it's a test that they have to give you right. to make sure that you still have feeling in, in the nerve endings. Mm. And they were just they're poking the bottom of my feet, the soles of my feet, with right. these with these pins, and they're not doing it like excruciatingly painfully, but just enough. Mm -hmm. It was just a prick enough to piss me off yeah. after like the tenth time they did it. Not drawing any blood. No, they would just go point. Do you feel that? Yes. Point. Do that? Yes. Point. Yes. Point. Yes. After about the tenth time, I said, hey, I think we're all in agreement. Right. I can feel it. Right. And then the doctor said, I'm going to have to do each toe individually. Wow. So the guy has got his hands all over my feet, and he's... You're pulling the toes apart. Now, is this our, your friend? No, this is another guy. Another guy. At, a, at any point, did you think of just screwing with him and saying, I don't feel a thing? No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Cause, because I'm petrified because this guy has told me, you know, nerve damage, you have a, a bulging disc, you have yeah. a, a, a nerve that, that's touching, uh, and then, you know, you don't know how you, you could be paralyzed. Is he going to have to, yeah. what are they going to do? Uh, they, uh, Mike, the great answer is right now. They don't know. Oh. Right now, they don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. That, that I went to see that doctor, and I got to go back to the other doctor on my. I won't, I won't miss any time at work. I'll, I'll be here in time for the show on Monday. But I got to go, go back to the other doctor to have some other kind of MRI thing done on Monday. All because of that guy that smacked into you. Yeah, mm. all because of that, uh, that old bastard. Wow. Who, who had, the, had the balls to call me. I've, I've not even mentioned this. Mm. Call me a couple of weeks ago. To bitch about how much this is costing him at his insurance company. Oh, right. Yeah. The fact that I'm still in therapy eight weeks later. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, and I so much just want to say, you old piece of crap. If you had just looked up, mm -hmm. if you had just looked up, old timer. You know, but I, I talked to the guy. And I think of what it would have cost him if, you know, you bought the farm. Yeah. Right? Well, at this point, it probably would have been cheaper. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about... I, I have to go to this goddamn back therapy virtually every day. Oh, right. Man. Virtually every day. And they gave me one of those units to to take home. Right. They were free to put those things on my back. Right. And you right. turn it up and it goes... <laughs> well, well, apparently that thing is, is kind of expensive. I mean. Say la vie. I mean, you're not faking it. Yeah. Um, no, God knows. I wish. Hell, like, you want to be in a doctor's office Monday through Friday? Jesus, mm -hmm. I wish. But uh, that's where I was today. Mm. Uh, with needles, needles in my feet, Welcome and back. and a hot nurse who got pissed off and left me in the dark. Wow. Was the nurse married? Uh, I don't know. Didn't check it out. Okay, please start to ask those questions. <laughs> uh, hello, Donna Mike. Hey, man, didn't you say you weren't going to drone on about this? Oh, well, excuse, Jesus Christ! Excuse me, I've been I've been in the studio exactly ten minutes. More like twenty. No, ten. Ten. Rob, hey, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Hey, bud, what's your problem? Uh, he was just out eating a bunch of BM. 
Don, Don, you know what? Hey, biggest BM eater in town. Hey, you know what, you douchebag? I swear to God, even with nerve endings and this a dislocated hip, hip, I would love nothing better today than to pound my fist right through your friggin' skull. I mean it. Do you have the guts to come down here today? Wow. Trust me, I'm pissed off enough, you douche. Come on, old man. I'd whip your ass. I'd kick your... Your teeth in. Our you offices know. are at 10800 Main Street, Fairfax, Virginia. It's easy to hide behind a telephone. Yeah, come on uh, down, dum dum, dum dum. Big mouth. Come on. Yeah, big mouth, big the ass. The has been thrown down. Big mouth, big ass, and a big fist. <laughs> but I'd love to put through the mouth of, of one of our dumbass listeners, and today I've selected it to be. You. I just, I remember you saying you were going to go on and on about so it. So is it a date? Here we go. So is minutes. it a date? I've not gone on and on about it. What is I it will, a date? What I will go on and on about, though, is how much I would like to beat you to a pulp because you have the, the gall the to, to call me up and... and the audacity! The audacity! You goddamn asswife! So give us the satisfaction. Come on. Nah, you'll never come down. No, you... You'll never come down. You'd rather hide behind your telephone. Oh, dude, you know. Behind his big plate of BM. <laughs> as he takes fork to BM. You fork to BM. Say that. What was that, douche? I don't eat BM. You better not ever say that. Oh, F you. No, he's not you know, fun anymore. I hate guys like you. Yeah, I he really can't even do. have a good argument with him. I really do. And, and someday in our lifetime, there will be a, the, that device. A button. The device you've been praying for. And I Same promise, device that you'll have in your car. And I promise that I won't abuse it like I've abused this whole titty bar thing. <laughs> I promise that I would only do it <laughs> once in a while, just on that one time that the guy called, <laughs> when I could just press the button and... And, and just his head. So, so you have that? Oh, he's still way. on the phone. Yes. He's still there. He's I'm still right here, baby. And just oh. his head, you know, it would just so his body would stand up for a minute. Mm -hmm. so it'd be one of those things like you see the body standing and the arms moving a little bit <laughs> because the head has been just no, blown no. from his body. I'd love to bring you to that doctor's office, have him put all those uh, needles in your head, so you'd be like, who's that guy? Pinhead. Or, like pinhead from Hellraiser. <laughs> like Pinhead. Absolutely. <laughs> you dick. I hope you're. I hope you're run over by a car. I hope you're paralyzed, and I hope you're sterile. And I hope you call me to tell me about it. And then I say, oh, you're droning on about this a little bit, aren't you? I wouldn't drone out about it, though, Don. Oh, uh, you know what I'd do? I'd come and I'd take a BM on your grave. <laughs> your mother would be standing there, and I'd say, hey, Ma, open up. Open wide. I'd let one go right in her mouth. So your retarded son called me. I just come back from the doctor's office. But ten minutes out of a four-hour show yeah. talking you about it. would kick your teeth in. It was interesting. Your mother, your mother doesn't have any teeth. <laughs> and, hey, I like it that way. Absolutely. You want to continue? <laughs> There's the nervous laugh. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not nervous. I touched a nerve with you. Thank you, Joe, for putting me on. Yeah, you touched a nerve with me. And look at him That's trying to, right. And look at him trying to get Joe busted now. No. <laughs> I told Joe just what I was going to say, and he laughed. And he said, hold on. You're a, you know what? You're a, you're beyond a liar. I know that. Buddy, bring him in, this, tough guy. This is his second call hey, today. Hey, tough guy. Tougher than you'll really? ever be, my yeah. friend. Yeah, he called earlier. Yeah. Yeah. You, Don, I'm going to beat you up. Come is is this the second time this guy has called today? Today, yeah. Well, I could easily beat either one of you. Uh, well, then you have the in, you have the absolute invite to come on down. Now you know where we are. We've given out the station address, right? And you have testified to the uh, fact that uh, you'd like to do this. So let's get it on. And if you would like, uh, let's either, dance with the one who brung. If you would like either Mike or I to sign a waiver saying when we beat you senseless that Fair. we won't sue you, we would be glad to. Wow. Absolutely. And I'd like to use a stick too. <laughs> Not a heavy stick, no. Just a stick, because it's not going to be used to beat you. The stick is going to be placed somewhere at the end of the battle. <laughs> so come on down. I'm telling you, we'll sign I'll a waiver. I'll put a little flag on the end of the we'll stick. We'll sign a waiver that says no matter what the happens. The stick will have a little flag that says BM on it. No legal action. So can I see you? Can I plan on seeing you before the end of today's show? Don, believe it or not, not everybody wants to hear about your poor little bat. Now, he's can not I, answering. Can I see no. you before the end of today's show? Come on. You've challenged both of us. Let's do it. Actually, you guys laid out the challenge. Yeah, all right. Well, you, you're going to take it? Because really, it's the, only, it's the only thing I can say. You're calling to criticize the show right. when, in fact, you have the power to turn it off. Right. You don't like it. But you've got to call up and be a tough guy. Think you're a smart guy. Think you're a funny guy. You want to be here on the stage. You want to be here in the arena. Go get your own radio show. I'm telling you. I, I would like my own radio show. Yeah, you piss me will. off. You're the type of guy I really would like to beat up. And I'm just in a bad enough mood today to do it. 
And I've never been in an actual fight myself in my life. Me neither, ready now. But today, and you, you do tickets. Today I'm I'm pissed off enough, mm -hmm. and I'm giving you. I pop you once, and you'd run away scared. Well, I am now wait. Now, now hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go on, you've been issued a challenge. Do you accept it or not? Yes or no? Uh, I'm not the type of guy to just go Bag. to a radio station. And Wuss. Right. Wuss. right. Yeah, no, but you're the, you're the type of guy that will call and bust balls and be a smart ass. Hey, the ratings are going up right now, Don, so don't complain. And a lot of people right now are calling to say, why are you droning on talking to this a-hole who's calling? Sure you are, but you're the one who's keeping me on. And I want to beat your ass. <laughs> The ratings are shooting up now. So Do don't you have any? Time. We will give you an opportunity to make a final statement. Do you have a final statement? Uh. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I love it, and he's dumb enough to fall for that. Oh, damn. Yeah. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hey, Don. It's Greg and Fairfax. How you doing? Hello, Greg. Hey, I just wanted to say, all kidding aside, I like hearing about. Oh, uh, you come down. I'll beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'll whoop your ass today too. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hey, Don. Yeah. Yeah, well, soon. Cell phone girl. Hey, Buzz. Hey. What? Have you no olives? <laughs> what was the guy just called and said cell phone girl? Cell, cell phone girl. A, a couple of flashbacks. You used to sing cell phone girl, and, and I used to ask, have you no olives? Wow. Just flashbacks, I guess. I when did I sing cell phone girl? Oh. Uh, about Lisa Herndon. About Lisa. Remember? Yeah. Because she's always on her cell phone. Cell phone girl. Mm -hmm. Hello, Don and Mike. Okay. It's Thank time you. once again for Profanity Friday. Here now, this week's dose of the profane. I visited my Aunt Sue to see her new dog, and when I saw it, I said, Shih Tzu? That's a terrier, maybe a Lhasa Wapsa, but there's no way that's a Shih Tzu. And that's today's Dose of the Profane on everybody's favorite Profanity Friday. Wow. Wow. Are you, a, are you a palate cleanser? And then he goes. You know, yeah. Just, just wow. that selfless caller. Yeah. And there's a guy I'd love to give a prize to. Mm -hmm. So come on down. The prize will be my fist in your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> no, he's good. He's good. You're all good. Except that one guy. That yeah. Guy. Except yeah. that one guy. Yeah. That, that guy doesn't just eat BM. <laughs> he eats BM. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Here's what we're looking for, moviepoopshoot.com. Poop shoot. Yeah. This is a site populated by militant movie buffs. Sad, pathetic little bastards living in their parents' basement, downloading scripts and what they think is inside information about movies and actors they claim to despise yet can't stop discussing. The Don and Mike Show. Only one song could topple this from the top spot in your top seven most requests. It all will be revealed in just a second. Eminem at two. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Right, right. What say you, Donald? Hi, Bill. They'll F you until you love them, faggots. Don and Mike. Not to drone on. <laughs> but I just forgot the funniest part. I was telling Mike and Robbie, um, part of what I had done today was an epidural. Ah. Where they numb you yeah. from the uh, from the waist down. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy said to me, you want to slip out of your clothes and <laughs> into this hospital gown. Right. And I said, uh, why? And he said, because... Well, he said, well, first, did you follow the instructions? Have you had anything to eat or drink today? And I said, no. He said, good, but there's a chance that you'll lose control of your bowels. Oh! Yes. And, uh, oh. I'm here to tell you that didn't happen. Oh, well, good. thank God for that. What a show that would have been. There was no, uh, <laughs> there was no BM to be found. Good. Last night's dinner, doctor. Uh, <laughs> Ramadan, happy Ramadan. Here is Abdul Sharif Absolutely. with... Happy with, Ramadan, fellas. With today's Ramadan Carol. Very good. This, right. is, this is actually the last in the installment for this year. Wow, the last. So are, are we near the end of Ramadan? Uh, well, not really, but God, I mean, come on. Yeah, that's for hate. Way to go. No, no, yeah. your limitations. Not not my best. Hey, I okay. do have a favor to ask, guys. If you'd sure. allow me, after I sing this last carol, to just put a real quick, quick plug in for my business, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, you deserve that. No problem. I thank you. Well, here goes. Joy to Hussein, he's not to blame for two wars in Kuwait. 
He didn't try to wreck it. He just tried to annex it. And the whole damn world got mad. And they bombed Iraq real bad. But he had deep bunkers for which he's glad. Joy to Hussein, he doesn't maim. All those who don't agree, he didn't guess the Kurds. That's really quite absurd. If you want to know what's true, they all died from some bad flu. <laughs> he sent them some aspirin and Kleenex, too. <laughs> Joy to Hussein, he's not so vain. His picture's everywhere. <laughs> right. On every wall he's plastered, the egocentric bastard. He likes to see his face in every public place. He's got a great mustache for a mental case. Yeah. Bravo. Thank you, guys. You, you, you put that guy together with the guy with the profane Friday. Yeah, you got yeah. something there, really. Yeah, you got true. yourself some real talk radio caller. Absolutely. All right, uh, Abdul, what's your plug? Yes, uh, the name of the company is Effigies Are Us. And we have branches in Mecca, Riyadh, Tehran, Beirut. We had one in Kabul, but that kind of got screwed up. <laughs> you know, hey, me. you got us. Why not? Let, let me, let me try to right. explain to you what my, my idea was for this. You know, you, you think about it. If you get 30 or 40 m Muslim radicals together, you know, it's fine to, to take a burlap sack and fill it with rags and put a paper mache hat on it. It probably looks more like Fred McMurray than George W. Bush. But <laughs> for that small group, that's fine. But, you know, when you get into Saudi Arabia, get into Iran, we're talking state-sponsored events. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> these programs, you know, these kind of setups, I mean, you can go full, full out. So I thought, wow, why not come up mm -hmm. high-tech, audio, <laughs> audio soundtrack, Animatro animatronic right. effigies. Wow. Great effigies. So Brilliant. here's just a few examples of some of the audio tracks that can come with your uh, wow. with your effigy. And, and by the way, the effigies are as follows. We're working on some more, but George W. Bush, of course. Right. Yeah, You're going to hang or burn this guy in effigy. Right. Yeah. Tony Blair, right. Vladimir Putin, <laughs> Salman Rushdie. Yes, we are still pissed at him. Yeah. <laughs> And Jim Neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay. So here's, here's uh, track number one. Okay. Yes, we are the great Satan. Burn us. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you, so you would come out, I guess, right. out of Bush's mouth. Well, nice, simple, yeah. well, whoever. Simple phrase, right. these. Track number two. We are the uh, evil unbelievers. Burning is just and reasonable. <laughs> and Tony Blair. Uh -huh. no. Three. Yes. Definitely, we are dog monkeys licking the excrement from the boots of the righteous. <laughs> Vladimir? Okay, yes. Number four, we are unclean. These flames may yet make us clean, but we are still dog monkeys licking excrement from the boots of the righteous. <laughs> Some are rusty. And the last one, the last one, actually, this is a very popular one in the northwest frontier of Pakistan. They love this one. And it goes like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you true believers really know how to hurt a guy. <laughs> All right, see you later. Happy Ramadan. See you guys. Bye bye. Right, bye bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Get wow. out of here. Well, listen, challenging listeners to fight is not our only thrill. Right. It's not our only talents. Robbie, we need that clock. We need the TikTok. Because it's time for us to review the movies that we've not seen yet. We have the gift. We have the sight. We are able to do this. Many people cannot do this. And there's only three opening this weekend as we head into the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, and uh, I think we'll have time to do... Uh, all three of them. Very good. Uh, the first one is the uh, James Bond, Die Another Day. Die Another Day. Then we have Kevin Klein, Emperor's Club, and Ice Cube with Friday After Next. Um, we'll start with Die Another Day. Would you mind? You go right ahead. Thank you. Die Another Day by Donnie. Okay. I like Pierce Brosnan as James Bond. He's definitely better than the last guy that was James Bond. Yeah, I didn't like the last Who I've already forgotten who, who he was. Timothy Dalton. And I definitely am into Halle Berry yeah. in a major, major way. But, as Mr. Skin said yesterday, there's no nudity. And I also don't like the Monty Python guy being the guy that comes up with the gadgets for James Bond. And the reason I'm going to give this is a, a thumbs down is that I believe it's a remake of the last Pierce Brosnan James Bond movie, which was a remake of the other Pierce Brosnan James Bond movie. Here's how you make this James Bond thing work. 
You make it R-rated. You put some graphic violence. You put some nudity in. You drop some F-bombs. They give it a PG-13. Too bland. Bond is too bland for me. I say no. Negative on JB. You got a take? Yeah, I do. All right, wait for the clock to reset. Uh, We are reviewing Die Another Day, James Bond. Die Another Day, the Pierce Brosnan, Halle Berry, James Bond movie, getting knocked by all the critics that it is the same old thing. Well, you know what? It's a James Bond movie. You're not going to get any plot that's going to be anything really innovative or anything exciting. What you have is you have special effects, which are always very exciting in a Bond film, and you have the lovely Halle Berry. And I, you know... I really have not even thought about going to a James Bond movie until I saw her coming up the beach with that bikini. I think she is the hottest thing on camera right now. And I think really, as far as Bond movies goes, you're not going to get any surprises. But you are going to be able to take a look at Halle's Berries. And let me say, I love that. And even, you know, what I like, I agree with you, incidentally. I'd love to see a James Bond R-rated movie. But this is what we have. And since it's all we have, at least they're putting a major Academy Award winning star like Halle Berry, opposite the best James Bond from Sean Connery, Pierce Brosnan. I give it a thumbs up. Oh, and the other thing, while the tape recues, yes. I, there's too much product placement. I mean, there's too many cars. We've already seen the ad for the Jaguar. Oh, already, my God. Every seen, magazine. I've seen the ad for the Thunderbird. They, got a, they got a lipstick. They yeah. got a telephone. Uh, next movie, uh, your chance to go first, Mike. Emperor's Club, starring Kevin Klein. I like Kevin Klein. I was a big fan of Kevin Klein when he did Silverado, which is really my favorite Western. However, can we say it all together? Dead Poets Society. This strikes me as a movie that has already been made. Or maybe Goodbye, Mr. Chips. But it really, you know, this is a formula that we've had before. We can share this one because I feel the same way. May I say also a touch of... A beautiful mind. A beautiful even though, mind. Even though the guy's not like a repressed genius. This strikes me as something where all I ask and my biggest criticism of Hollywood, come up with original ideas. Mike, it's a feel good. Didn't you see the end of it where all of the students toss their caps in the air? And why does every single movie about school nowadays seem to be the rich boys boarding schools? And how many people can really relate to that? Okay, I want to see something that's just a little more reality based. And I know it's a feel good movie, but you know, it's got that same guy that played Franklin Roosevelt. Yeah. That Poindexter that's in every <laughs> elitist role that you can find. Hollywood just We're regenerates agreed. itself. We're mm-hmm. agreed. They put this movie out because they think it's a smart movie. Yeah. You know, smart movie for dumb people. Exactly. Dumb people go and they think they're smart because they Make a smart it. movie for smart people and I'll come and see it. All right, next movie. And I would like the full 60 on this. Uh, Ice Cube, Friday After Next. Uh, Friday After Next by Donnie. Um, I liked Friday. I liked Next Friday. I love the fact that it's Friday, next Friday, and the title of this one is Friday After Next. That's funny. Uh, I think Ice Cube is funny. I think the plot of the movie, from what I've seen, is funny. I, I, I think it's Ice Cube is a, um, from what I've seen in the ads, he's a uh, one of those uh, shopping mall uh, rent-a-cop guys. Security guard. And... It's just really an excuse to get all the people from Friday and next Friday together to make another movie. And and I know there will be fart jokes. There will be uh, uh, D jokes. There will be TNA jokes. Uh, I know that I'll be the only white guy in there, so I'll wear my Sean Puffy Combs a running suit. But I'm telling you, out of all three mo- movies this weekend, if I was going to go to the movies, I would see Friday after next. Cause the other two... We're funny, funny, funny. And I love the scene with the baby doll in Mike's driveway. (laughs) Would you like uh, 60? I really can't speak to this movie. I'm completely, I'm a white guy that's completely out of touch. But I'll give it my very best. All right, please do. Friday After Next by Mike. This looks like a fine film. (laughs) And I hope you all enjoy it. No, I, I really, I have not seen the Friday series. I do like Ice Cube. I think he's a legitimate movie star, and I think he makes good movies. But, you know, I, I read a summary of this plot, and it seems like uh, really nothing new, nothing not very exciting. But if you read a summary of the plot of Friday mm-hmm. or next Friday, 
you'd think the same thing. The same plot. Yeah, it's the same plot. But I'll tell you, there's only one ray of sunshine that I read about this, and that is flatulent jokes. And yeah. for my money, I think flatulence is the funniest thing that has ever come down the pike, and it will always be funny. You laugh at it from 5 to 95, and I think that in and of itself makes the potential for this being funny, but... I'm not going to go see it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I haven't seen the other ones, and I, I didn't even know it was coming out. Oh, wow. Hello there, Mike. Yes, yes, baby dolly. Please send me to see that movie. Okay. I've been laying in your driveway all broken up for, for months now. All right, I'll take you to see it, baby dolly. Please save me with my one good eye. You get to come to the movie. We'll go see Friday after next. Well, let me see. As we re, uh, review our reviews, we're split on Die Another Day. Okay. You say... Uh, I give it a thumbs up. I mean, if you're going to go see a James Bond movie, go see this. There's nothing that I'm standing up and cheering for. Yeah. Um, Emperor's Club, we're agreed. It's a leader. It's crap. It's a stupid movie for stupid people who think they're smart. And uh, Friday After Next, I think you'd like it if you saw the original Friday or even next Friday. Okay, then I will give it a you know a uh, an unknowing thumbs up. All right, there you go. That's uh, the reviews of the movies. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, this is Kenny. Hi, you're on the air. Hey, I was uh, just wondering, don't you guys think that Roger Moore was... A great James Bond. I mean, I've been following Bond since I was a kid. I think and, Roger uh, Moore was a, a good James Bond. Sean Connery, but, it, the but best he of. followed Sean Connery, and yeah. that, that was. I think well, that, that if you you know if you separate him a little bit, Roger Moore's not a bad Bond, but I think Pierce Brosnan's uh, the best one since Sean Connery. Don't you kind of wish that they'd let Sean Connery be James Bond and just be an older James oh, Bond? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they brought him back with Never Say Never Again, which everybody went to see. Oh, yeah. It's one of the most successful Bond movies ever, and, and Sean Connery was the the, the thing that I like about. Uh, just hang up right in the middle of the call. Thank you. The thing I like about Pierce Brosnan, he gets angry. Like Sean Connery used to get angry. Mm -hmm. Roger Moore didn't get that pissed. No. That's um, what I didn't like about Roger Moore. Roger Moore did it like as a goof almost. Yeah, he did kind of a tongue and shake with it. Uh, it is. But I think Roger Moore during his era may have had the best poon during the time he was James Bond. However, Pierce Brosnan has just lapped him on yeah. that one because mm -hmm. of Halle Berry. Yeah. And only Roger Moore took the time to appear in a cannonball run picture. <laughs> there you go. Uh, one more call, then we're up on a break. Hi, Donna Mike. Hey, Donnie. Yeah. yeah. I know you're on the injured reserve and all, but uh, did you catch uh, he was on Letterman last night? Who was? Ice Cube. Ice Cube was on Letterman last oh, night. Oh, I got a T-vote. Was he any good? Yeah, he was pretty funny. He was on for you know, a good, good eight, nine-minute segment. Sad on Letterman. That's a good segment. Eight or nine minutes. Eight or nine minutes. Would, uh, and then uh, Letterman kissed his hand at the end. I was watching the other <laughs> night because uh, they were saying Kevin James is going to be on. Yeah, I watched Kevin James. And Letterman had every piece of crap bit he could come up with right. before he finally brought Kevin James out right. for two two-minute segments. Yeah. The angry Kevin James. <laughs> yeah. Kind of an angry well, Kevin James. And you know why I think he was angry? He got bumped. It was like quarter till midnight. They had no guests. Mm -hmm. Letterman's just right. doing bits and is talking to the cameraman. And you know, you can always tell uh, at the end of one of the segments, Kevin James started to drum. He yeah, like drummed on his knees, <laughs> which is always that. Okay, I don't want to be here. We got a break. Uh, oh, simply the most powerful and the most beautiful woman in sports broadcasting, <laughs> Nancy, will join us uh, in just a moment. This is the Don and Mike Show. God damn it, Eddie, it's not to me. Hey, it's my shoulder. I hit my shoulder when I hit the gym floor. It feels like it's full of gravel. Well, it's always felt like it was full of gravel. Now, come on, give me a B12 shot. That's what I want. I was messing with my knee. Hey, how you doing, baby? All right, Dale, you gonna get a shot? Oh, no shots for me, turkey. I can't stand needles. Hey, we gotta master the technology of this game. Yeah, how do you do that, man? Take all those soup pills and shots, man. It does terrible things to your body. Oh. If you last long enough, you'll realize the only way to survive is the pills and the shots. Oh, not me, turkey. I got respect for my body. <laughs> you'll get past that. The Don and Mike Show. Dinners, Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No more bye weeks. That's great. Lots of 1 o'clock games. Lots of 4 o'clock games. It, it's hard to believe that, that we're at this stage of the football season and uh, they're already making noise about playoffs. And we're ready for the uh, pick the pros for the scab lead and uh, joining us again uh, from the NFL today. He's going to be out of control today. I was reading uh -huh. the ratings. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Today are up, 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 up. The man wow. is doing very well, and it's all because.
years of Jim Nance. We made him. We made a monster. Here he is, everybody. Uh, Nancy, hi, Jim. It's always good to get back with the guys who made me. Uh, Jimmy, <laughs> and uh, you know, we we uh, think back, Jim. Back to three or four years ago, we would bust your balls about getting confidence. And do and, and you really remember when you would do a show, and, I mean, do your, do your TV show, and you would actually sometimes ask us the next week, how did you like it? How did you think I did? Well, I was just trying to find a way yeah. to get you guys engaged in a conversation. Yeah. I think I actually cared what you thought. <laughs> See, now this is the new Jim Nance right here. I mean, I mean let, let, let me just, let's be honest here. I started at the network in 1985. I was 26 years old. The youngest full-time broadcaster CBS Sports ever hired, and still hold that record. Do you think I came there lacking confidence? <laughs> Jimmy, I, want, I, will, I, I, I gladly accept this back talk. This is good. This, I can't believe you guys bought into that whole routine. <laughs> <laughs> this is a confident man. I like that. Let me tell you, the segment is brought to you by NFLWatch.com. High quality watches from all 32 teams. Order today, NFLWatch.com. So you say you started back in 1980? What? I started at the network in 1985. 85, you were 16 years old. Yeah, right? close. I was 26, and I was handed right away the, the reins to the studio for the college football, the Prudential College Football Report. That's incredible. And uh, within that first year that I worked at CBS, I was uh, hosting the Final Four in prime time and, uh, and uh, hosting our college basketball studio, all the NCAA March Madness you know, coverage. Dare I working say the it. Masters and all those crazy things. Dare I say it, but Jim Nance could conclude his stellar sportscasting career and still have a very lengthy career in politics. <laughs> <laughs> I like where you're going, by the way. You do. But you need, I need somebody to run with on that. You know, I need all kinds of Dion. advisors and, and, and no, such. It's Nance and Sanders. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. You get Dion to run with I'll you. I'll tell you what, we would make a very strong ticket, and we are uh, very, very close. Now, Very close. We call each other Ebony and Ivory. Jim, I have absolutely no critique of your NFL show since the weather's bad and you guys have moved inside. Yeah, I knew. I actually, you ready for this, Don? It crossed my mind last week. That's why I've got way too many thoughts floating around in my head. But as soon as they called it last week because of weather in the area, we moved inside. Yeah. I thought, I know there's one guy out there who's going to really think he had something to do with this. Yes, and Jim, I'm telling you, when you guys are inside, and I know you like that whole thing about being with the fans and all that other stuff, when you're inside, man, that show clicks. And they've got a little uh, deal now because Boomer Esiason talks so much. They have a, uh, a boomer box. Mm -hmm. The boomer buzzer. Yeah, and it, it, it's this thing, this prop that Jim actually gets to hold up. And when he wants Boomer to shut up, it's the buzzer. He, he gets the buzzer. He gets the, <laughs> gets the, yeah, that's exactly the one right there. And we do it vir virtually every time Boomer opens his mouth. Anyway, Jim, wow, you're on top of the world. And it's time for me to ask a favor that we've not asked uh -oh. for years. Jim, let's flash back to the year 2000. Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> Let's flash back. Can we? Here's the flashback music. We have a dream sequence here. Let's Absolutely. Go, let's all stroke our chins like Letterman does, and let's let's go back to the year 2000. All right, welcome back, everybody, and again, happy Thanksgiving from all of us here at the NFL today. Now, the IBM Power Poll, this picked by my guys here as always: uh, Craig, Randy, <laughs> Jerry, this part, Eric, okay. Man, Bob, Matina, our radio buddies, Don and Mike. Everybody in on this one. Now, Jim, that was a, uh, for, certainly for you. Man who runs down the streets of New York with no shirt on, screaming, "You're the man!" <laughs> that was nothing, but to us, it's everything. It took us two years for the show to recover from that yeah, jolt. Yeah. Now listen, Jim, with us sitting around the TVs with our families, uh -huh. just the fact that you say hello to us on your Thanksgiving broadcast, which yeah, I did. I said another time too. I remember over something to do with the best floats or something at the Macy's parade. Well, you know, we we never caught that one, mm -hmm. but but that one we've got on tape. Uh, and I want to ask you again, Jim, next Thursday. I, I don't want to lay it on you. I don't think I don't think it's going to happen on Thanksgiving Day. Oh. We don't have much time. We're not on the air. We got a, a, a we got, got a, just a half hour pregame. I, I know, but you've got a half time. You've we got, do, and it's 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 not much happening there. But you've got a half time, Jim. Does this mean for the big holiday? For we're, the bigger we're gonna, holiday? Why does why do you have to be on on Thanksgiving Day? Is this, isn't it not enough that? For you to know that I'm thinking of you, and, <laughs> and I mean, does that not suffice? <laughs> he is you know what, funny. Jim? Sometimes you have to hear it. It's not enough to know. And Jim, sometimes we want the world 
And we want your audience that you, you reach with all your TV viewers to know that, that, that we have this relationship. And, Jim, on Thanksgiving, let's face it, there's only two games on. There's only two games on, and the, and the whole friggin' country is yeah. watching those two games. Now you're getting right down to it. What you are is you're being a bit of a pig about this. Because yes, you know, they are. the ratings are off the charts that day. Yes. And you're looking for the maximum exposure. Yes. If I offered you a little, little mention at halftime, because I would assume... You're getting the Tennessee Baltimore game in your area here this yes, weekend. Yes, if I was to offer you a nice little pop there at halftime at Tennessee Baltimore, you, that probably wouldn't even be good enough, would it? Well, now, listen. Uh, you know, it, it might, and I say might, fall into the category of we have to take what we can get. But, uh, Mike, you're, you're a very honorable man. <laughs> Jim, Jim, just let me say, we were there. We were there. We've been there <laughs> yeah. with Jim Nance through the growth of the NFL yeah. today. You know, as you've gone back to the original music, as as you've tipped the show up, you've got... I mean, Jim, we know you're big, but you're just so much bigger by being on this show. <laughs> hey, it doesn't... Uh, listen, you guys have been some of the greatest supporters of this show. There's no question about that. That's indisputable. And all, and all we ask is a way of repayment. Is a nugget, if you will. Now now you're asking for some sort of compensation. A drum In the form of a mention. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Jim, simply because... You are the all-powerful Oz that you sit there in the magic box on Thanksgiving with millions of Americans. I, I don't see it happening on Thanksgiving Day. We're going to have to accept it. But I, I do see somewhere, somewhere in the coming weeks, a very, very nice mention. Ah. Can you, I, and I, I know you've accused, accused us of being tiggy. I would say if it wasn't going to be on Thanksgiving... The mention that you gave us on that one, thanks. It would have to be something just a little bit more significant. Than that. <laughs> that's, not, that's not enough. Our radio guys on a mic. Uh, Our radio guys on a mic. No, 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 no. You can go back and actually count the frames on that thing, and you'll see I dragged that 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 baby out for uh, you know three what? seconds. <laughs> Jimmy, I thought I, somebody thought I kind of like they needed to like punch me in the back there that I got caught on the words. <laughs> now, now, Jimmy, Don you know. and my. Now you, now you know, Jimmy. I got I got the dish. So I can I can watch you do the halftime cut in when you do your live part on virtually every single game. Mm -hmm. Do you actually do that? Yeah, you know you know what's sad. Do I to just see how I mix up my pitches? I I do, and I also enjoy switching from game to game when you have to like like do the know, updates into give, the game. Give the same highlight that you've yeah. done a million times to, yeah. and make it sound fresh when it's you know it's like he is not lying, Jim. But it's, well. When it's the tenth time you've seen the guy from Pittsburgh he, he run a kickback, starting to take on almost like a stalking quality here, Don. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know what, Jim? I'm an NFL fan. There you go. I'm a oh, football okay. well, fan. I was afraid it had something to do with. Uh... No, and, and Jim, I'm proud to say, I'm a Jim Nance fan. Wow. Color me guilty. <laughs> color me, color me guilty. Oh, you're killing me. I love you, man. <laughs> Jim, I love you, and I want to tell you something. I love you enough to say your name on national radio. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the love bath, Jim? Well, it's, it's on the way there, brother. Yeah. It is on the way. Very All good. right. I should also don't know when, but stay tuned. Very good. All right. I should also tell you that in our charity picks. Uh, hey, I want to congratulate you guys because I heard you guys have caught me now. We're dead even. Now, out of uh, the 30 games that we've picked with I Jim, heard you guys combined have 20 wins, and I have 20 wins. Yes. Out of the 30 games we've picked, Jim has 20 out of 30. I'm 20 and 10. I have 11 correct. Which is just absolutely pathetic. 11 and 19. And Mike has 9 correct. Which is oh. almost statistically impossible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so, embarrassed. Keeping in mind that we are playing for charity, oh, let's really try to hard. pick them this week. You know, I you think. guys are a combined 20 and 40. You know, I try, and I and want to I say... I so. am 20 and 10. <laughs> Since I, I bring up the rear here, I, let me make a statement here. I, I just want to tell everybody listening that I... I make a valiant effort each and every week to, to try to pick these games. Uh, during the 15 or 20 seconds before Jim comes on the air, I go through these games, yeah. and, and I really try to do, do my and best. For longtime listeners of this show, I just want you to see, we have created a monster here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, four <laughs> years ago, don't believe this jive you say, did you guys believe that? Four years ago, four years ago, I don't care what his resume was, mm -hmm. with the Final Four, with the Masters, with college basketball, with all the other great stuff he does, four years ago... When it came to NFL football, 
I think really he was, he was a he was a humble little girl, mm-hmm. and now look at him. I was, look at un, him. I was an unloved puppy. Now, <laughs> now I'm an 800 pound gorilla. Uh, yeah. Yes, now he's John Travolta <laughs> walking <laughs> down the street in Saturday Night Fever. Very good, Jerry. Trust the, me, I am a I'm a humble man, and, I, and that's the way I was raised. And I, I love though for. Uh, once a week, you know, which is about what we are on here, about every Friday to come yeah. on here and uh, and just play act what it must be like to it be obnoxious. Like, it there are others good. that have been, you know, accused of that in this business. You know, and, and Jim, you know, really, and, and you have to look at yourself in the mirror and realize that you, you might not even realize this, but that, but there's some of that in you. You know, you might come on and really You guys it up draw, definitely are able to draw it out of <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what it says about two of you. And it's therapeutic, man. It's and, good for you. And it is cleansing. There it is go. good stuff. And, Jim, I know that there's a part of you deep inside that knows you're a part of everybody's Sunday. He knows and one that, thing. He knows one thing, and we always ask him to say it. What do you know, Jim? You oh. know one thing. It's oh. the statement we always ask. of trying to get through one show without having to go there. What do you know, Jim? Just say it one time. What do you know? I'm the man. <laughs> yeah. That is that what you're talking about? And you know what it is, Jim? Think about this. For a generation, <laughs> when I was growing up, it was that show, and it was Brent Musburger. Hey, mm-hmm. I was raised on it. He yeah. said he died of it. Yeah, we I all were. You, I take a lot of pride and uh, responsibility was sitting in that chair that was once manned by the great Brent Musburger. And, uh, and now, I, I truly, truly respect the heritage of the show and the job that he and, and Brent, uh, not only Brent, but Irv and Jimmy the Greek and Phyllis George and that whole crew that really built the NFL today and, and now, into a prominent, prominent part of the of the national television sports landscape. And now look at now you're sitting in that seat. You're the man to a new generation, and think how you've let that generation down by kicking us in the nuts on national radio <laughs> and refusing to say our names <laughs> on your TV show. I knew you were going to go back. I've given you guys two pops. I, know. I, I tell you, how about this? Uh, this is my fifth year of hosting the NFL today. I've hosted the Super Bowl. And I, and I have tremendous, as you can hear, just overflowing admiration, adoration for Brent Musburger. Mm-hmm. And I have mentioned him once in five years on that show <laughs> that he built. Right. And I've mentioned Don and Mike twice there you go. Right. in well, five years. As long as we got... How does that work? I think we got... There a, is something really wrong here. I think we have an IOU for some time this year. Why not? Let's just, I'm going to mention Brent's name on Thanksgiving. That's what I've decided here. <laughs> oh, man. Here are the five games we're picking. Uh... Let me see. How about San Diego at Miami? Wow, the Chargers really surprised me last week, but i got to go with Miami. Well, did you watch the NFL today? Did you not hear me pick San Diego? Yes. Yes. Over San Francisco? Nancy, I Can did. Can I be obnoxious here for just a moment, please? <laughs> well, yeah, why, why should this moment be different than any other time? <laughs> yeah. you know, we pick the games on the year. We pick five games a week, as we do here on the show. We pick five games. And on that show, I'm, uh, with this trio of, of football legends, I'm winning that pool, too. Well, you know what? I'll say wow. that he's a competitor now. Listen yeah. to him. I mean, I take a lot of pride. I tell you, Dion wants it so bad he can't stand it. He thought he had a game <laughs> on me on San Francisco, San Diego. He was standing on top of the desk with his arms raised to the heavens when Cortez lined up to kick the winning field goal, about to break into one of the Dion dances when he would find the end zone. And when Cortez missed it, I said, man, Dion, it is over. This is the <laughs> end of your season. <laughs> I'm, I'm 39-16 and 16 on the show. Wow. He is five games games back, so he's, what, 34 and 21. He's out of control. Boomer's, like, got 30 wins. He's out of control. Dan's right around 500. Listen to this you guy. This. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, someone's got to unplug him. Uh, hey, weren't we doing the picks before Jim yeah. jumped in? San Diego, San Diego, Miami. Where I'll, were we now? I'll take Miami. Mike. Uh, I will take San Diego. Jim, now now your legitimate pick, please. Mike, that was a, a you know, listen, nine wins. Mm-hmm. I want to try to lift you on my shoulders. Can we make, can we make changes? You Can know what? Mike change his pick. You know, I'm, I'm completely and utterly offended. I'm staying with San Diego. <laughs> please, please, Mike. As a friend, this is like almost like an, an intervention here. Jim, it's this listen. is a problem. It's going to be Miami. It's dog I'll dog. tell you, Sunday at 12 noon Eastern time in our pick segment, I have got one of the great notes of all time. And when you hear that, you're going to run. If you don't even bet on games, you're going to want to run to your neighbor's house and bet on the game and bet Miami. <laughs> so now he sounds like one of those guys that's on Sunday morning on cable. Oh, you... my 800 number. Get your credit cards ready. <laughs> uh, next game, Indianapolis at Denver. Uh, 
Uh, Jim, uh, it, it's it's not greasy this week. It's Burline, right? It's Burline, his first start in 23 months. Uh, I'll still go with Denver. Mike. I'm going to go with Indianapolis. Mike. What really, we're getting to a point here where your numbers are going to get so bad that the IRS might go back and, like, audit your last five uh, income taxes. I mean, this is really bad. It's going to be Denver. Okay, man. Hey, I have a, I stand to really make up some good Yeah, questions. you do. And I, uh, Mike, I'm, st- I'm, I'm the one looking to catch up here. I know you are. I know. Uh because I'm, because uh, I got the same picks as Jim. That's <laughs> true. They can catch up. You can't catch up. Uh, Jim, <laughs> Buffalo, at the Jets. I'll take Buffalo. Mike, I love hearing all this talk about the New York Jets. I think they are for real. I'm going with the Jets. Tell him he's wrong, Jim. Uh, he's right this time. There we go. Sorry. No. I'll go with the Jets. They're playing good football. Buffalo has blown three fourth quarter leads this year. I think this, you know, they had a thriller in the first week that went to overtime, and Chad Morton ran the kickoff back in overtime to give the Jets a victory. But uh, I'm going to go with the Jets. They're a better football team than they were in week one, and they're playing their best ball of the season. All right, here's a great one. Green Bay at Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it kills me to do this, and everybody listening to us on the Packers flagship of the WNFL. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Tampa Bay. Mike. <sighs> this is hard for me, but I'm going to go with Green Bay. Jimmy. I'm going to give my faithful followers there on uh, WNFL the, the, the one thing they want to hear, okay? And that is I think the Packers, I give the Packers a 70% chance of going to the Super Bowl. So I'm leaning toward the Packers for the Super Bowl, but I have them losing on Sunday to Tampa Bay. Yeah. Hey, Jim, sidebar, let me ask you something. Fantasy football. Mm-hmm. I got Brett Favre against Tampa Bay or Tom Brady versus Minnesota. Yeah, well, Minnesota can't stop anybody. I mean, I would go, I would definitely, because, you, again, your you're, that Tampa Bay defense. Yeah. You might get far, far might manage a couple of touchdown passes, but I mean, Brady could have, like, a four-touchdown day. you got to go Brady. I can't, but you, believe, you believe what's happened? I'm asking Jim Nance advice. Man, this is now competency. Oh, why, why, why wouldn't you? No. <laughs> Finally, the Monday night game. <laughs> Philly at San Francisco. I don't understand that. Philly at San Francisco. Uh, WYSP, Eagles flagship station. Sorry, no Donovan, no win. San Francisco, Mike. Feel the same way you do. I've been picking Philly all year. Got to go with San Francisco. Jimmy. It's the 49ers. It's another bad Monday night game. <laughs> and you know what? He, what he's saying there is F A B C. No, 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 no. He, but uh, I know you. But you're not saying it. But you're saying it. Another bad Monday night game. Well, you won't say our names on television, you son of a bitch. But we still when love I you. I say I'm not going to say your names on television. On uh, Thanksgiving Day. We still love you. Did you hear me? By the way, last week, did you not hear me talk about Michael Strahan? Did you um, see that when I was going through the highlights stuff on Michael Strahan? And did you see me talk about Donovan McNabb? Yeah. Well, I mentioned Don Nevin oh, and Mike uh, Will Strahan. Get out of here. Get out of here. And Mike. Get out of here. Have, okay. a, nice, have a nice holiday, Jimmy. Thanks, guys. Happy right. Thanksgiving to you, you both. Bye, Nancy. Everybody out there, too. Bye-bye. Bye, Nancy. There he goes. Wow. There she goes. And we thought it was a new level when you called him Nancy, and yet this time you called him a son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you push that envelope. Yeah, it's fun. Here he gets out of the phone and he like, called me a son of a bitch. What's all this, then? I hey, Rob, tell him, tell him about when we had him on hold. Yes. And I said, Rob, uh, do Nancy a courtesy and tell him three minutes until we go on the air. And now, this is the new, the new and improved. Right. Believes in himself, Jim Nam. Sure. Mm-hmm. What did he say? Three minutes. Who is this? <laughs> I said, it's Rob. He says, hey, Rob, listen, I don't know that I want to sit around for three minutes. Why don't you call me back? There you go. There wow. you go. Hey, I like that. He's got his mojo going. Like I said, 180 seconds, you son of a bitch. I, I'll tell you, hey, it doesn't change a thing. <laughs> I, I love having her on this show. <laughs> and she's kicking her ass in the pit. Oh, she is. We're going to have to pay her charity. And, you know, really, if, uh, you know, if it goes bad for me this week, tell her me gone. I mean, long gone. Right. Because I picked everything wrong. <laughs> we will be right back. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Nancy. Uh, oh, a Friday favorite. That's coming right up. This is the Don and Mike Show. It wasn't my fault. You stole my car. Where is the truck in this house? When I get confirmed, I'm going to be a man. So how come I can't drive? Oh, you really want to get into this, huh? Who was that man that we had to pick up at camp last year for bedwetting? That was the year before last. You could have killed those girls. Now, that would have been interesting. What? What did you just say? 
Death just shows the ultimate absurdity of life. What is this? Are you trying to get me to lose my temper because I'm about to put you through that goddamn window? See? That's what I mean. Life is absurd. Don't say that. God forgive you. There is no God. Hey! Robbie. The Don and Mike Show. Thank you. Okay. Das ist nicht gut. The Don und Mike Show. All right, uh... Sometime before the end of the show today, Caller 100 is going to get a Lionel train set. And you might not think that's a big deal, but it's uh, put like almost a thousand bucks. Well, yeah, I mean, they're the best. It's yeah. big, gigantic, you know, the big kind with the right. houses and the people and, and all the other stuff. Very cool. Huh? Stand by and tell you what to call it to win uh, that. Uh, Monday on the show, we'll be uh, starting the selection process to get our families for dinner on the Mayflower. Dinner on the Mayflower, a real super treat for you and the whole family. Man, uh, we're going to get a real Mayflower event. Well, we've got it, uh, a real Mayflower moving van, and we're going to serve dinner on it. Yeah, we, we got a restaurant to cater it, and we'll dress Joe Arginger up in a uh, pilgrim suit, and uh, there will be uh, naked girls and uh, food. And that's uh, Monday, also Monday, postponed uh, from yesterday, the sex expert, the sex expert, Dr. Patty, and the sex pillows. And I think you ought to take a good hard look at those pillows. Yeah. And uh, the nude girls that will be in the various sexual positions. Mm -hmm. Sexual. All that on uh, Monday's episode. Uh, but now, a Friday favorite. It's been down now and day of game and cash for you. It's a, it's a smell of sweat. The sweat. Uh, I'm a hardworking guy. You, you know, you guys give me a break. I just thought I'd come by and, uh, you know, sit in with you. Hey, you know, uh, how's it going? I, uh, I, I stopped by. You know, I wanted to get a progress report. I know I came out at the beginning of the season. Don't want to find out how what you're doing uh, just checking on my uh, progress and all that good stuff. How you doing? I like your orange uh, sweater. See, uh... The progress uh, report on the show would be, I've loved uh, every episode. There are some people on the show yeah. who have wanted uh, more violence. And, uh, you uh, got it, didn't you? I, uh, you know, that's why I killed Ralphie. I, uh, you got his head off. advantage of a defenseless animal. When a guy is like that, it does that crap. Yeah. I mean, that pissed me off big time. I don't mind telling you. Man, I tell you, hey, you know, that, let's, let's make this quick. Don't get me upset. i got to get back to the titty bar. <laughs> oh, you mean Bada Bing? You're Bada Bing, Bing, absolutely. How you doing? It's good to see you. I brought some friends along. You know, it's a kind of a new me. You know, it's uh, it's what I do now. I brought my horse. It's my latest horse. Now, I thought, no, no, I thought about Pioman's dad. It's Luca Brasi. It's a new horse that I got. Luca Brasi. You don't mind, I'm going to keep him here because, you know, uh, after that fire, when they had that fire, I don't trust it anymore. So if you bear with me. No, I don't want the horse in here. I, I, get the horse out. You don't want the horse in here. It's a defensive the, animal. I don't want the horse in here. I'll chop your head off. All right. Uh, Put the horse outside. Get the, get the horse out of here. All right. Goodbye, Luca Brasi. Uh, the most stupid movie. He's gorgeous, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Like his flank. I don't know what Doesn't the... he look great? He's got great color. I don't know what the fascination... <laughs> you and I have one of my friends here. I brought the goat. <laughs> you know that goat that I got out there at the barn? It survived the fire, so I brought the goat in there with me, and I, I got it hanging here right now. Now, this way he's going to body you. It's not a big horse like that other thing. I just keep him right next to me on my side. That's <laughs> yeah, a good little boy. We could name him right now. What do you want to name him? How about we name him uh, Tony Jr.? How about we oh, name that's him? AJ, isn't it? How about we name him? I'm going to kick him in the nuts. Hey, it's a defenseless animal. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about with that kind of crap? Come on, that's it. Don't say that about an animal. What did he ever do to you? He's a goat. What did he ever do to you? He's a dumb goat, Tony. He's a, not a dumb goat. He's got feelings. Yeah, he's, he's sensitive. Don't forget that for a second. Don't forget that for a second. He's got feelings. You can't say that about my goat. I like my goat. <laughs> hey, goat. That's a nice goat right there. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey goat. goat. Hey, knock it off. Don't you go near him. Don't you go near him right now. I'll start crying. Don't cry. <laughs> Don't cry, but look what I'm going to do. What are you going to do? Oh, oh no. What? What are you doing? Where's my bag? Hold He's on. reaching in his bag there. Okay, you be careful. Let me, I'm going to call you Cousin Vinny. Bring, Cousin Vinny the goat. Bring that. Bring that goat. <laughs> Cousin Vinny the goat. Bring the, bring the goat over here. What are you here. doing with that lighter? <laughs> hey. Hey! Yeah. Oh, no. I swear to God, I will cut your heart out. I'll, I'll cut your still beating heart right out of your chest. Hey, look at that. I set your goat's tail on fire. Well, I put it out. I'm not going Don't be cruel to animals. That's not it. You want to end up like Ralphie, I'll put your head in a bowling bag. I'm going to sit down now. Relax. 
Jesus. I don't know what it is with you and animals. Animals. She you brought, them. What are you like, a freaking, freaking farmer in the Dell? I bought some of my things around. I, I, I feel better around animals than I do around people. These are my chickens. Uh, this one would taste good, I bet. Yeah, this one would taste good. You try to work me, I should. Don't do that. Stop that. Stop that. I stop that. Hey, Tony. <laughs> yeah. I hate animals. Oh, no, you oh. don't. I know you got dogs. You got dogs at your house. You got three of them. You like being surrounded. I got intelligence on you. I got intel on all you guys. You know what they do? I don't know about him. You got any animals? I got my mom's dog. You got your my mom's dog. You know what they you do? Got in cats. This guy cats. over there. Yeah. yeah, I know about you. You know what they How do? How you doing, Mr. Kitty Porn? You know what they do in, uh, no. No. in Vietnam? They eat dogs. They eat dogs. That's why I'm glad that they, we fought those people. We should have fought those people with that. I'm very happy with my goat. I got a few others here. Come on, bring him. Come on in. <laughs> my goat. Wow. There he is. What an yeah. ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I want to be guy. surrounded like I'm in a manger. This is great. They're all my friends here right now. Dad, around everybody. You know, I, I, Tony loves animals. I've noticed on the show that you seem yeah. to have... A love of animals. Well, yeah. You seem to value... I think uh, they uh, you know, nobody can take care of them, so... Uh, you, you seem to value animal life more than well, you I do, do human life. I actually, uh, you know, I like animals. They don't talk back to you. you know, they don't give you the fits. Like all the your people in my life that cause me all the trouble making me pass out. This is my pet elephant. Wow. I brought the pet elephant in. I hope you don't mind. It's really nice. Beautiful. Nice little animal. How you, hey, you got any peanuts? Tony. Hey, give him a peanut or a sugar cube. They all like sugar Get out of here, elephant. Oh, right. I know he's a little big. Hey, he left the president here. Elephant. Cute little thing. Look at that big pile. It's like a giant milk tub. I got my chickens, though. Who lets your chickens back in? And stinks in here right now with the chickens. <laughs> and, and, and your pussies. Yeah, the pussy cats are all around me. Come on, friends. Come on, my little friends. Hop up on Tony's lap, please. Here's my jungle cat. Wow. Listen to this jungle cat. This thing is amazing. Uh, the elephant, don't talk to down there. Get out of here, elephant. <laughs> get out, get out, get out. There you go. My little pussy cat will stay with me. Like this, this one of them uh, Siberian tigers. You got it here. Look at him growling at you. He knows you don't like animals. I'll hold on to his tater. I'll hold on to his tater, otherwise he'll bite your balls off. You don't want that to happen to you now. That's it. Yeah. This way. You like this? I bought this last week. It's a walrus. <laughs> I got a walrus in here. Hold on. It's fantastic. No, it's yes, it is. Yes, Hold it on. Is. Let me look at the box. Hey, it's whatever I say it is. No, it's, it's supposed to be a chimpanzee screaming. That's not a chimpanzee. No, that's my Oh, no, that's Brett. Oh, no, man. No, no, Robbie, you got the wrong cut. It's a moose. Oh, man, I think you had too much uh, zoop of the muscles. <laughs> man, listen to that. that was Smell a... that thing. What is that thing? That was a moose. A moose? No, it's a walrus. <laughs> hey, whatever you say to him. Ah, it's a walrus. See what I got here? See, it's a rattlesnake. I got a rattlesnake. This is the worst sound effect we're going to ever heard. I, it's over there in the corner. I got my rattlesnake right here. It says pig squeal. It's a, that's a pig squeal. No, that's the way. No. That's what it says. Actually, it sounds like me on the bowl the morning after. Hey, would you like a cricket? Look, no. I got a little baby defenseless cricket. This is a frog. That's oh, a little frog. <laughs> hey, you like my frog? Hey, I like my frog right now. What are you picking up my frog for? I'm going to step on your frog. No, oh. don't do that. Don't step Watch. on the frog. Watch. Oh, no. I'm going to kill it right now. Watch. Oh, no. Ah. You're a dead man. Ah. You're a dead man picking on a defenseless animal. Who wants a frog's leg? Oh, cut it oh. out, man. Look at the, Look at the, you squished him with his guts and everything oh. all over the floor. I swear to God, when you're not looking, I'm going to get you. I'm going to come and get you. I'm going to cut your body. I'm going to bleed you in the tub. You know, I'm going to figure out what's going on here. Can I Can I talk to Jim for a second? Would you, Jim? You mean Jim Gandolfini? Yeah. Yeah, hold on a second. Jim, hey. Because, you know, this whole thing with... Hi. Hey. Hi, how are you? How are you? Jim, I'm doing great. Uh, he is. Uh, he's totally out of control. What is the deal with Tony and the, having, and the animals? He's having a total and complete mental breakdown. Mm. Robert, would you give me a glass of water, please? Uh, he is. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not thrilled with it, but he is really having a total mental breakdown, and I can't uh, be responsible for it. That, well, I'm that, very, very disappointed. That, it's really. It's uh, slowing down the shooting schedule for mm. the uh, for the rest of the episodes, and I think we're going to need to uh, get him in legitimate. Professional help, not just that stuff on the show. Not the fake therapist on I'm the very, show. Very, very, very unhappy. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I don't know what I can do. I, I, try, I try really hard to uh, to talk to him, to uh, you know, to intervene, but there's just no, no but, way. But Jim, if I could just break in for a second. He just uh, now insists on being followed around by all these animals. Jim, <laughs> yes. you, James Gandolfini. That is I. You're playing Tony Soprano. This is true. So 
You, yes, Jim, right, brought all the animals today. I understand this, but this is not me. As long as you understand the difference, it's not me. It's Tony but it's that one brings guy. the animals. I don't bring the animals. But, but I'm speaking now to the conscious actor. You're speaking to me, Jim. James Gandolfini. But Jim is ill. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jim is ill, and, and I am ill, and Tony is very, very ill. Mm -hmm. He is the sickest of all of us. We're all in here. <laughs> oh, wow. Each and every one and of us. And you just realized... the guy that was on Crim Crimson Tide. You're speaking about yourself in third person. Jim doesn't play that way. <laughs> what, uh, what about um, that Robert Redford movie where you played the... Uh, the I played the uh, warden of the uh, military mm -hmm. prison, and uh, I went head-to-head -head with, uh, with Robert Redford because I was basically jealous of his military service. <laughs> Um, he's around, too. All of my characters that I play are within me. And uh, Tony, though, is the most demented and ill of now, the group. That's why he really can only establish, uh, if we can be honest, a a true relationship with uh, with animals. Now, he's I, unable I, to communicate with other human beings. I'll try an experiment here. Yeah, fire away. You try to stay with me. All right. And I'm going to let an animal back in. Okay. And I want to I want to see for myself. If you're able to control your emotions to remain James Gandolfini. You can do this experiment, but I can guarantee you what will happen. Good. Look, it's a, it's a goose. I'm not fond of goose. Gooses. Or geese is there. They're often. Can you get it away before it uh, soils the carpet? Oh, like please have it leave. Wow. Hmm. See, I thought we'd get some kind of amazing yeah. transformation. No, not at all. What was that? That seems to be a, uh, a Carmani hawk. <laughs> and that has no very effect rare, on you either. Very rare bird. That's a little blue bird that's uh, flying over here. All right, you know what? Let me try an experiment. <laughs> Bring that bird back. Bring that that bird right there. Let me catch him for a second. Don, let me catch him for a second. Oh, oh, oh Don. Yeah. You're confusing me. Hold on, Jimmy. I want to see something. I, my brain's starting to hurt. I want to see the reaction you have. Yeah. All right. When I stomp on that bird. Oh dear. And kill that oh. bird. That's not necessary. Why? Why did you do something like that? You know, it's why, not. Why did you do that? It's not you. It's Tony. Uh, well, Tony would be very upset. He'd be very angry. Oh, with I'm you. glad he wasn't here. He might even threaten to kill you if you if he saw you step on that bird. Well, don't tell him, okay? Well, he could probably see it's under your foot bleeding. Oh, or I'll get the bird out of here. Okay, yeah. that's great. And then let's bring Tony back in. You'd like to bring uh, Anthony back in? Yeah, because it's obvious that uh, you, Anthony, would you the rational James Gandolfini had doesn't have this reaction to animals. Okay, Anthony, would you come back in here, please? Hold on a second. Here he comes. Okay, oh, Tony. Tony back. Hey. Hey. Where's my bird? Hey, <laughs> up is my bird. Did you kill it? I haven't seen your bird. Let me look around. I see a feather under your foot. <laughs> the F is that. I swear to God, if you kill my bird, there's, I'm at your whole family. Everybody's going down. Do you understand that? You're not going to be a chance. You're not going to be able to go to Jersey. You're not going to be able to go to New York. I swear to God, let you kill a baby bird. A perfectly you defenseless bird. You asked Jim. I didn't do anything to the bird. Hey, come on here. Look what I'm holding. It's Flipper. I'm holding an actual dolphin in my arms. They don't exist out of water very long, though. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's a good flipper. I'm gonna flip. This is my gorilla over here. I brought them both in here right now. We're having a good time with all of them. All right. Oh, now calm down there. Come on down there, Mr. Boots. That's my chimpanzee, Mr. Boots. Hey, Mr. Boots is in here. Come on. Don't kill your foot. I brought the horse. I want the horse back. Out here. There we go. Fantastic. Come on, here. Come on everybody. Get around me, guys. We're having a bad time. There's an even Oh, dude. It's my menagerie. <laughs> As they, shut up, Mr. Booth. This is great. Where do they start? Hey, you know what's really fun? What? When they start throwing their poop at each other. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. That's, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You're not allowed. Who is that? Janice. <laughs> That was Janice. She just picked her head at the door. Get out of here, Janice. I don't hear you unless you knock. That's my sister. Why'd she come in here? I hope she's not going to duck her head in here again. I don't know, Tony. Hey, Janice, come on back in and say hello. Oh. No, no, no. That's all right. It's going to be fine. That's my little uh, kitten. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my wow. little kitten. You play the animals, I'll tell you what they are. They're the fresh okay. about it. Okay. But you go. love all of them. I love all my beautiful creatures. God's creatures right here. That's uh, my pet boa constrictor. 
But you would be very as angry. As says, as a giant anaconda. You would be very angry if anything happened to any of these animals that you love so. I would not only be angry, I'll tell you right now, I can see that feather under your boot, and I know what you did, and I heard about your back, and I swear to God, you're not going to have to worry about that because I'll pay you all of that. What is this, Tony? That's a, uh, that's my wolf. It's a wolf. Yeah, that's what it is. It's an ancient extinct wolf <laughs> that I have acquired through my loading dock connections. It sounds a lot like the animal that might be loose in Michael Mary's front yard. That is true. It is the mirthless laugh of the dam. <laughs> hey, did you hear about that uh, black, uh, that little black doll that Mike found in his driveway? Yeah, that's really nasty. The baby dolly? Yeah. It sounds like he's gone out of his mind. I think he's drinking too much. Calm down. Calm down. That's my jungle cat. That's Mr. Whiskers. Pet Siberian tiger, isn't he beautiful? beautiful? Look at him with his, his beautiful furry face. He's so gorgeous, I like him. All of my friends are all... It's my penguin. <laughs> this is my pet penguin that I brought in here right now. Oh. Don't we have penguin music around? And yeah, the penguin, he's just wandering around here. You calm down now. You calm down. I got a seagull and the penguin, both at the same place right now. Well, this is tough. It's a juggling act trying to get them all. Come on, everybody, calm down. Come on down right now. Hey, penguin, I got music for you. There we are. We're all getting around the pulley, but that's right. <laughs> Jesus, I'm getting a headache. But Tony, crazy. yeah, what, what do you want? But, uh, what I don't get is, yeah, go ahead. You yeah. love animals. I love animals. They're the greatest of God's creatures. Honestly, we Anna, should take care of each and every one of them, including my my, my snakes. The first, the first episode. Of the Sopranos. Yeah. You were very concerned about, very much. about the, the, the ducks, the birds that were in your yeah. pool. Yeah, the very, very, very lovely animals that fly to south for the, uh, you know, the winter there. And, the, and then you're concerned about the horse. Yeah, the horse. And then, then Ralphie burned the bond down and they killed the horse. You should have seen the birds. Hey, whoa. Hold on a second. Whoa, whoa that almost ran over my feet. Come on back. Oh, that's, they like to run around there. Sorry. I apologize. They made a mess in your hallway. That's <laughs> Get down and drop. Oh. Okay, hey, I was a cowboy for a second there. Wow. Man, we had about eight of my horses in there. I brought them all down in a trailer. <laughs> I got a big tractor trailer. Like, uh, like uh, who's that guy uh, that, uh, you know, collected all the animals? Moses. You know, he got all the animals two by two. No. Yeah, man, whatever, smart boy. Right. You know what you know about him? Yeah. And the pictures of your son. No, no. Yeah, that's uh, it. What? He has a picture of AJ when he was in the swimming pool. That's <laughs> his. As his screen safe. No, that's not true. What? <laughs> it's not true, Tony. He, he just said that. He's got a picture of Anthony Jr. No. On his computer? Yes. You're a dead man, Burbank. I swear to God. I'm going to send some of my animals over to you. We're, uh, they're going to tear your flesh off your bones. Tony, we're up on a break here. Go back in the dead. <laughs> What's that? Oh, there they are. Look at that. Look, I got a little hamster. It's <laughs> a lot of hamsters. They're big. Damn, how you know Our phone number is 877-365-3636. Come on, my little friends. 877. Go over and chew up the news, man. 365-3636. Chew his sack off. We'll take the first two calls right now to play Jeopardy. Come on, my little friends. With Tony. I got a shower. And somewhere in there, Jim. Yeah, that's why you smell so Yeah, I smell. I got all the animals and feed and all the poop and all that stuff, but I love them. They're my family. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Look, I'm not back in 10 minutes. They call the cops. Standard operating procedure. Here's some standard operating procedure. Stay the f*** away from Tony Soprano. Shut the f*** up and listen. It's over. Kabish. Over and done. You call or go anywhere near him or his family. And they'll be scraping your nipples off these fine leather seats. The Don and Mike Show. It smells like a damn zoo in here. Providing you with plenty of emotional scarring. The Don and Mike Show. Now we're here with Tony. That was Patsy. Hey, he's a good boy. He takes care of that. He's watching uh, while Christopher, Christopher is in rehab. <laughs> Who's the next to die? Yeah. 
I can't tell you that. If I told you that, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> let's, let's just enjoy Ralph's death for a while, shall we? And it was a good one. It was. Wasn't it great? That's good. When we heard the bowling ball, we all went, whoa! Hey, what was that? Yeah. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed killing him very much. That's <laughs> my low budget jeopardy. Thank you. This is low budget jeopardy. Now, I the studio is a, uh, a account from Columbia, Maryland. Let's say hi to David Keith. Hey, Dave. Hey, Tony. Hey, LQ. Howdy. And now under the studio is a, uh, a what? It says he's a glazier. I don't know, I don't that know that what is. the hell that means, but he's from Reno. Let's say hi to Tim Ingram. Hey, uh, Tim. How you doing, Tony? How you doing, LQ? Tim, what is a glazier? Installed glass. Ah, there you go. All right. Install this. <laughs> and now in the studio is the host of Low Budget Jeopardy. Remember, David and Tim, don't screw with LQ. Right. And say hi to Alex Trebek Geronimo. Howdy, boys. Uh, so you really enjoyed Killing Ralph? I had a great deal of a good time killing Ralph. <laughs> it was a real good pleasure to kill him. Really, I heard him real good. I, I, I found it in his head until he was unconscious. Because he, you know, he killed a defenseless animal. Yeah, he's a bad guy, too. He liked to have things put in his dupe. I know. And then, uh, then his wig came off, and Christopher, Christopher didn't know that he had a wig on. It was so funny, and then his head was dripping. Oh, man, I enjoy it always. <laughs> one last thing I forgot to ask you. How was that Russian chick with one leg? She was great. She had a great, great box. <laughs> She really did. Right here, right here. here are your categories, guys. They are. What a box. <laughs> your categories are Sopranos Death. There you go. That's always a good category. Thank you for promoting the show, Doc. Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Oprah the tabloids. True or false. That bitch. NFL starting quarterbacks. Hey, that's good. I like football. You're going to like this, Tony. Okay. Famous animals. Hey, animals. I love animals. They're all good and nice to pet. <laughs> and new ones. <laughs> Divid. Home video, and uh, let's see, uh, Dave, we'll start with you. What was the true or false one? Uh, Oprah. Oprah, true or false for one. All right, these are stories in the tabloids about Oprah. Uh, true or false? Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank Oprah, you. to Mary Stedman, they're officially engaged. What is true? Yes, that One dollar for you, David Keith. That's an actor, tabloid. David Keith. Uh, Brian Keith. Yeah, there's a David Keith, Keith too. Yeah, there really? Yeah, he's in the... Pet Cemetery. Yeah, Pet Cemetery. All right. <laughs> That's a good movie. I don't like animals dying, Rob. No. Uh, go again, Dave. Oprah, true or false for two, please. Oprah gained 100 pounds recently. What is false? Right. According to the tabloids, she's lost 100 pounds. Oh, wow. come on. Look at her. Look at that ass. I know. <laughs> she's got a great ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hog. And you All can right. your head. <laughs> All the way up it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Pacino. That's Pacino. That's yeah, you. he's a good actor. <laughs> All right, David, you're in control. So let to get, all right? Oprah, true or false for three, please? Oprah has one BM per day. <laughs> what is true? But that it's is, big. That is, that is true. According to the Globe, they didn't say BM. Yeah. But they inferred it when they were talking about her new diet. BM. Yes. <laughs> I love BM. Hey, Tony. You ever see a horse BM? It's huge. <laughs> you know what we call people on the show sometimes are bad callers? What's that? BM eaters. <laughs> it's as big as a suitcase. All right, David, you're in control. Let's go with famous animals for one, please. Ah, Disney's flying elephant. Who is Dumbo? Dumbo. Yeah. Yeah, I like Dumbo. I'd like some Dumbo gumbo. Mm, that would taste good. <laughs> Dumbo gumbo. <laughs> I'd have good. to kill him, though. Hey, that's mm. not funny. Okay. We're having a good time. You're playing a game and you talk about, you, would you kill the elephant so you could eat it? Yeah. Have some Dumbo gumbo. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's inappropriate and very bad. That's cruel. <laughs> I apologize. Thank you. Apology accepted. <laughs> David, you're in control. Famous animals for two, please. TV's first. Say first. TV's only talking horse. It was Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed. Yeah. Mr. Ed. A great show. I love that. That's a great show where he talks to the horse. All right, uh, David, you're in control. Let's close it out for three. All right. Bart Simpson's dog. Who is Santa's little helper? There you go. Wow. Three dollars. Boy, he's run the category. The other guy, Tim, how you doing over there? Flipping Einstein on the other end over there. Yeah, this guy is a, it's absolutely like a buzzsaw. Yeah, buzzsaw. Just don't take my horse to it. Okay, uh, Dave, go again. Let's go with state and capitals for one. Boo! Dave, you are so dumb that's not a category. Tim, select please. 
New on home video for one. There you go. Whoops. Right. As a matter of fact, let's subtract a dollar from Dave. All right, then I'll shoot down to $11. Smart. What do you think of that, Einstein? <laughs> there you go. New on Divid. Uh, stars Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, oh, what a softball. <laughs> Man, you were too busy being mean to the other guy. David, your chance to steal. What is Men in Black 2? There you go. He got his dollar back. One dollar. He's back in control. Phew. He's got no money. Go again, David. Uh, let's go with two. Uh, stars Mike Myers. What is Austin Powers is gold member? Yeah, well, I even got Austin Powers is gold member. All right, man. Two dollars for you. Way to go, David. All right, let's close it out for three. Stars Matthew McGonaghy. Don't know. Ah. Tim, your chance to steal. Have no clue. Don't blame you. Some piece of ass called Rain of Fire. Ah, what a piece of ass. <laughs> okay, David. You're in control. <laughs> They could call it a piece of BM. <laughs> piece of BM. That movie was a piece of BM. <laughs> All right. You're in control, David. Let's go with Sopranos for one. Yay! Sopranos death. Now we're talking. Yay. Decapitated by Tony and Christopher. Who is Ralph? Right. One dollar. Deserved every bit of it, too. Should have gone slower. Like the horse. Okay. One dollar for you. Sopranos for two, please. Tossed off a boat by Tony. Big pussy? Yes. Two dollars for you, man. Right. Your brain you can get them all right. Let's close it out. He dated Meadow before he got whacked. You lost me there. Hey, Tim, your chance to steal. I should have been in Sacramento. I feel like a Sacramento one right now. Come on, guys. Jackie Jr. Jackie Jr. Jackie right Prio, Jackie Jr. Right in the back of the head. A tragedy. All right, David, you're in control. All right, this is where I become a fag. NFL starting QBs for one. You'll start this weekend for your St. Louis Rams. Oh, who is Kurt Warner? Oh, you didn't say that very faggy. <laughs> no. Oh, Kurt Warner. Let me, let me tighten my bra. <laughs> Ooh, let's dance. <laughs> Come on. All right, go again. NFL starting QBs for two. Starts this weekend for your Washington Redskins. Oh, who, who is Werfel? Danny Werfel. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me put my skirt on a little tighter. <laughs> All right, go again. Let's close it out for three. Starting this weekend for your Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going to see if the other dude can answer one. I don't know. Tim. Charity. Your chance to steal. <laughs> Does Tim have any money? Tim has nothing. No, not I've made any up three at all. times. It's uh, John Kitna. Is that the end of the first round? That's it. You're out of there, Tim. And that means, Tim, you're going to get some parting gifts, and David, you're going to be playing with yourself. <laughs> That's great. I like these. <laughs> with final low budget Jeff RD. All right. And final uh, low budget Jeff RD. Here we go. <laughs> Your category is The Amazing Spider Man. Oh, I know that. Spider Man. Yeah. Uh, he created the character Spider Man and is now suing Marvel Comics. Because he hasn't received any money for the movie. You see, the, the Sony Pictures is claiming that the movie hasn't made any money. Yeah. Even though it's taken in over $400 million. I know how to play that game. I know you do. You want me to talk to him? Anyway, he's the guy who created Spider-Man. Uh, we need his name. Don't forget, answer in the form of a question. And, oh, hold on, wrong tape. And a good luck. All contestants on Low Budget Jeopardy will receive Tony's Treats. Tony's Treats, the snack cookie for your dog or your cat. Tony's Treats are made with beef byproducts and just a small hint of garlic and oregano. I designed these Tony's Treats myself so they can be enjoyed by both your dog or your cat. I hope you like them, and your pet will eat them like effing crazy. In fact, they're so good, I even eat them for myself. Now back to fun, a little bit of Jeopardy without <laughs> First guy's inconsequential because he didn't get any right. That's right. David gets to go on the next time if he gets it right. Uh, Dave, he created uh, Spider-Man. Oh, who is Stan Lee? <laughs> <laughs> that, that means that David right. Keith is our low-budget Jeopardy champion. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Stan Lee, uh, that means that uh, Dave, you are the winner. Uh, Tim, don't go away, man. Uh, just go away. No answers right at all. Mm. And now here is uh, Tony Soprano. Tony, uh, first of all, Tim, you get these potting gifts. You're one of Soprano's gift pack. 
Chat online with soprano star Jamie Lynn Singer. That's metal, my daughter, on Sunday, December 1st at 10 p.m. Just log on to hbo.com backslash sopranos and submit your questions. But wait, there's more. You won an Ultimate Fighting Championship prize pack. Or the Ultimate Fighting Championship 40 Vendetta on Friday, November 22nd. That's tonight at 10 p.m. Live and only on pay-per-view from the MGM Grand in Vegas by calling your local cable provider. UFC as real as it gets. And you get to double your score there, Brian. Uh, David. David. You double your score to $40. We throw a $25 bonus for $265. All right. That, you can call me whatever you want, Tony. There you go. Okay, fag. <laughs> 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 Guys, thanks, have for a, thanks for the opportunity looking like a loser. I appreciate it. No problem. What do you mean? What do you mean? Thank you. Looking like a loser. You I'm a loser. Right. Thank you. Have a great weekend, guys. You too. Thanks, man. Uh, Tony. Yeah. Always great to see you. Well, it's, it's always a pleasure. And it's I know that's uh, come by. I know that uh, you uh, you want to ride the elephant out. I'd like to, if you don't mind. Let me wow. just climb up here. There we go. Okay. All right, and uh, come on there, Mr. Boots. <laughs> what was your number? <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> Low budget Jeff Hardy's a production of. All right, it's up here. And it's distributed by King Wilt. On Mush. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm one of the other animals who's named Mr. Boots. Yeah, he, he likes that name, Mr. Boots. <laughs> his elephant, Mr. Boots. His monkey, Mr. Boots. Uh -huh. His dolphin and his penguin. Mr. Boots. Actually, his dolphin's name is In a world where owning a radio was strictly forbidden, one man found a way to bring good news to his people. Mr. Boots. <laughs> Me. He made it up. Here he is, uh, Mr. Boots. Uh, Buzz. Uh, yes. Uh, Buzz, what is your lead story today? Today, David Letterman gets his own alley. All right, and uh, uh, David Letterman Alley, let me say, that's Buzz's lead. And now, uh, caller 100, uh, gotta, you got to be a dad or a mom, okay? Okay, because this is a, a, pr a prize for a kid. Very good. Uh, a Lionel train set. And it, it's not uh, one of those cheap jobbers. It's, uh, yeah, Mike. I'm a dad. Uh, Mike, it's got to be call 100. Oh, that's right, employees, not of those. Call number 877 365 36, 36, uh, the Lionel train, uh, courtesy of Lionel Buy and Sell, the metro area's largest train shop, located in Kensington, 301-949-4000. We got it right now, valued at almost $1,000 for the uh, 100th caller on the toll-free line. Get even. It's, uh, I think we're giving away, like, a, an expensive prize every day. Very good. Wow. For the next 12 days. Oh, Get it, everybody? Mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. For news and comments. News and comments. Coming up Coming on up. the Don and Mike Don Show. And Mike Show. That was very professional, all right? This is the Don and Mike Show. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike Show. Let's go to D.C. and Garrison's on the line. What say you, Garrison? Hey, O'Reilly. How you doing? Good. Um, I would have to give uh, person of the year to a man that's led, to a man that's stuck up for what he believed in, uh, to a man that backs down from no challenge. That would have to be Don Geronimo of the Don and Mike Show. Don Geronimo of the Don and Mike Show. Now, are you related to this guy? What's that? Are you related to him? Do you know no, him? No. Did he give you a car? No. Because Garrison, on the, on the screen here, it has Jesse Ventura. Yeah, I changed my mind. Oh, you did not. You wanted to give this guy a plug, Garrison. We know where you live. We're going to come over to your house tonight and uh, take a reprisal. But it'll be a gentle reprisal. We'll probably force you to wash our car. Just like me, they long to be close to you. Yeah. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Let's get our Bill O'Reilly uh, thought of the day to head you off into the weekend. God, I'm, I'm senile here. Thank you, Bill. Uh, just a hand of Buzzy Lou. Uh, let's give away this uh, nice Lionel train set. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Yeah, am I caller 100? Are you a parent? Yes, I am. Really? Of what? Uh, a boy and a girl. Uh, very good. Nice enough. And uh, what's your name? Joe. Where are you from, Joe? Sacramento. Oh, Joe. Enjoy your Lionel train set from Lionel Buy and Sell. See the latest the 21st century has to offer in accessories, scenery, and trains, including sets with sound and electric control. Cool. Lionel Buy and Sell. Enjoy. Right on. Thank that's, you. Incidentally, that's a boy's toy. Give that to, yeah. the, give that to the boy. Give yeah, that. yeah, definitely. I've been pricing trains. I wanted to get him involved in them and... 
And yeah, they're expensive. They are. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I might be. I might have to make an argument on that one. I think uh, my uh, my daughters have both expressed interest in uh, trains for this Christmas. You get them nice dollies. No, they have plenty of dollies. You get them dollies. <laughs> yeah. Let them play yeah, with that. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Hold on a second. Let them play with that nice dollie down in your driveway. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> well, hello there, Elizabeth. <laughs> it's long gone, Don. It frightened me. Uh, now here is uh, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. Uh, David Letterman didn't get the interstate or the stadium he requested, but he is getting an alley named after him. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Last year, Letterman asked his alma mater, Ball State University, to name its football stadium after him, but universities only do that if they get a big contribution, and Letterman didn't make one. This year, he asked his hometown of Muncie to make a stra- name a stretch of interstate after him, but again, without forking over any dough, they turned down his request. <laughs> Now, city officials have decided to name the South Walnut Street Alley, downtown, Letterman Alley. <laughs> Actually, on his show, what he wanted was, you know, much like the Beltway. Right. Yeah, he wanted yes. the uh, David Letterman Expressway. Yeah, right. There is a 465. Mm-hmm. He's living in Indianapolis. It's like the Beltway. It's a highway that goes around. Want the Dave Letterman Expressway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a, a big highway that goes around the city. Mm-hmm. He wanted that to be named the Dave. Yeah, the Dave. The Dave Letterman Expressway. Right. <laughs> and he was saying on a show that people would just say, how do you get there? Well, you get on the day. The day. Yeah. Yeah. You get on the day. <laughs> but they stiffed him. So who finally gave him the alley? Muncie? City, uh, city officials in his hometown of Muncie, Indiana. Muncie. Uh, Letterman Alley is located between a bar and a comedy club. <laughs> It'll be dedicated December 5th, complete with street signs and a camera to broadcast live pictures of the alley on the Internet. Letterman and his people have not yet commented on he that. He won't be there. He won't, he won't no. touch it. Oh, no, heaven. He no. won't. I, I mean, he, I, I bet he doesn't even acknowledge it on the show. Right. Well, Liza Minnelli and her husband, David Guest, say it's not their fault their reality show got canceled before it ever hit a TV screen. VH1 says it is their fault. But Liza and David have begun a bashing blitz against VH1 starting last night on Larry King Live. They blame a 29-year-old producer from the cable music network. They say Liza was singing with Ray Charles and Ashford and Simpson at a dinner party in her home when the producer insisted she also sing with younger VH1 stars like Michelle Branch. I saw some of this uh, the other night, right. and it's hard to tell who's wearing more makeup. <laughs> if, it, yeah. if it's him right. or her, and he is totally manipulating her. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like she sits there, and Larry King would, you know, Eliza, Eliza, what's new for you? <laughs> and she would start to answer, and then he finished it. Oh, oh that's sad, because yeah. she's, so, she's probably yeah. so, still so wasted. Right. Mm. Well, David Guest says he refused the request for Liza to sing with a younger singer like Michelle Branch, and, and then he says the producer yelled at him and hit him on the arm. Oh, God. He also says the producer wouldn't turn off his cell phone while Liza was singing. The network says it canceled the show because the couple wouldn't give it the access it needed. So then Larry King says to to the to them, what do you have upcoming? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the husband says, Liza signed to be in a major motion picture. Uh, we can't talk about that yet. It's uh, with a famous uh, British director. But what I have coming up is for the third year in a row, I'm producing the WKTU Christmas Extravaganza. <laughs> And what it is is it's a disco party put on by one of the dance stations mm-hmm. in New York City. Oh my God! You know, but for a radio station. Oh my yeah, God! Yeah, that's that's the guy. This is Liza Minnelli. Hi, Don and Mike. <laughs> How can I say this? Uh, Our gang. <laughs> and I know Rob has questioned the sexuality of David Guest, but uh, I believe also on that same Larry King show, he said that his favorite part of Liza was her left breast. Oh, and her labia major. <laughs> I thought I'd pass that along. What do you think that looks like now? <laughs> Which? The probably the same. Uh, <laughs> officials in the Hamptons are making it very difficult for Jerry Seinfeld to spruce up his house there. Aww. Two years ago, Jerry paid Billy Joel $32 million for the ten and a half acre estate. How sick is that? Some of the wood in the house was rotting, so Jerry started hiring guys to make repairs and changes. But now, town bureaucrats say Jerry's torn 85% of the house apart for his renovations, and they say he doesn't have nearly enough paperwork for that. Quoting a building inspector, he needs permits up the yin-yang. Seinfeld's people say he has all the permits he legally Who needs. Who are these people? Exactly. By the way, outside the main house is a three-bedroom house for the hired help, a five-bedroom guest cottage, and a 
22 car garage. Oh, you know, kill okay. him right now. <laughs> God damn. 22 car garage. 22 cars. It's his passion. She likes cars. It's his passion. Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson together again. The former football duo reunited yesterday for an interview taped to air on Fox's NFL pregame show Sunday. They also reportedly settled some old issues in what Jimmy Johnson says was an emotional meeting. Hey, where's that tape we have, Rob, with Jimmy Johnson laughing like an idiot? <laughs> Johnson coached Jerry's team from 89 to 93, but they had a falling out that prompted Johnson to leave the Cowboys. How about you, Tim? 94. That's the tape we're looking for Wasn't right bad. Now. <laughs> now Johnson's a football analyst for Fox, and he says Jones invited him to do the interview. Yeah. yeah, here you go. Hell of a job. That's a way to fight through it. How about you, Tim? Right. One bad? <laughs> Get old boy. That laugh. They won't say what they discussed. Johnson was apparently joking when he told reporters yesterday he offered me a contract and I turned it down. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, Buzz, be uh, hold on. Right. We'll, we'll be right back. Tim. This is the Don and Mike Show. Uh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. For the young gay boy in rural America who thinks he's alone, he's not. He has the Don and Mike Show. Uh, let me uh, welcome uh, new affiliates. Keene, uh, New Hampshire. WKNE. Superior, Wisconsin. WXTP and starting Monday, uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Let me say hi to all those good kids up at Keene State College. Uh, Pittsburgh is W U R P. Warp. <laughs> now we hear his buzz. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don, hi, Don and Mike. Uh, despite the outrage around the world, German officials have decided not to press charges against Michael Jackson for dangling his baby over a fourth story railing. Children's advocates in England and the U.S. were demanding Jackson be arrested for reckless endangerment. Instead, the Germans last night gave him an award for his work with children, the Bambi Award. Dumb Nazis. Yes. I the Bambi Award. Yesterday, Jackson's fans in Berlin caught a glimpse of his apparent look-alike. A man wearing exactly the same outfit as Michael. Hi, Michael Jackson. Appeared with Michael at his hotel room window yesterday. God. The double wore a white sheet over his head while Jackson simply wore his surgical mask. Buzz is brought to us tonight by Viramax Sexual Enhancer. Right. Have great sex more often with Viramax. Finer health food stores, pharmacies, and retailers call one triple eight try. VMAX. Sorry, Buzz, I forgot to mention That's that. That's all right. And after, by the way, his fans held up an anti-tabloid sign, uh, Michael Jackson sent him down a pizza. There you go. Hey, and real nice when he took his kids to the zoo. Yes. Did you, did you see the pictures that he had? I saw some pictures of him at the zoo where they, they've got, like, the same kind of uh, veil on or something like the, that. Mm -hmm. what, what do they call those things? The uh, b barupas? Or, um, a burka. A burka, yeah. That's what yeah. they're wearing, the burkas. Yeah, he keeps his kids covered at all times. Idiot. At least their heads. Oh, the zoo. Shannon in the morning. <laughs> Hi, zoo. Here's an invention men are not going to like. It's called a nippet. Its purpose is to hide women's nipples. A self-adhesive no. patch on each breast will no. supposedly keep her nipples from popping up under clothing, even oh, in a room on. as cold as the Don and Mike studio. Oh, stop oh, it. Oh, no. The inventor says she got the idea during an Alaskan cruise. She's a Hollywood costume designer, and she got help from her doctor husband. She says her customers include her movie studio, the producers of the soap opera Passions, Halle Berry, J-Lo, and Angelina Jolie. See you in Toledo, you stupid whore. <laughs> Quoting her, we're not trying to say it's a bad thing for women's nipples to show. This is just for the times you don't want them showing. Oh, yeah. Don't F yourself. There should never be those times. In sports, the Washington Redskins held their first players-only meeting yesterday. You know, that's always a good sign. Veterans Daryl Green and Bruce Smith called the meeting before practice. Okay, the on three. We suck. <laughs> One, two, three. We suck. They're going to win this weekend. Yep. The idea was to get players to focus on the last six games. How instead many of... Benjamins would you like to bet on that? Zero. <laughs> they they want to focus now on the games instead of their coaching problems. There's been concern that new coach Steve Spurrier isn't picking up the NFL fast enough. Uh-oh. Yeah. And finally, yeah. porn it's his fault. Porn star Kim Kelly has put on a little weight, so she's going on a diet. She hopes to lose 10 to 20 pounds over the next 30 days. She plans to do this 
with an all-liquid diet. Oh. I know something she could drink. That's what she's going to drink. Oh, no. Number three? Yeah. Right. All month. Oh. Nothing oh. but. And the occasional banana shake uh -huh. to clear the palate, apparently. <laughs> she's planning six meals a day. More than 800 men have already volunteered. Hey. Once they get screened for diseases, they will then supply the protein and zinc and other nutrients. I got it right here. And Lisa, I think we should book this girl on the show. Got a favor in return. Yeah. I'm Buzz Burbank wow. on the Don and Mike Show. He's at it right here. Her name is uh, Kim Kelly, right? She's quite chubby, yes, yeah. that's her. Mm -hmm. Her uh, website is www.manjuicediet.com. Yeah. Hey, Tim Kelly, did you? No, no. <laughs> oh, Kim oh, Kelly. Kim wow. Kelly. That's it. Got to go. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Don't hurt yourselves. Love you, free to love you, Bart. See you Monday. Good day to you, sir. 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 Hey, Heineken. Hey, my truck is full of juice. <laughs> and you? Oh, yeah. BM. Eaters. Till we meet again. Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice. And I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging.